Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. Hi! And we already have Hi. laughter in the background. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I kept you muted then, because I, I, I wanted to get at least one intro out there without, uh, without completely messing it up. Anyway, Just welcome, everybody. This is Resonance Arcade. You do have your microphone turned on, don't you? I do have my microphone turned on. You've got the stream going on. out. The stream is going out. It's, it's being recorded. We have a guest as well. Hello, Josie. How are you doing? Hi. I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Um, if you want to just introduce yourself, I imagine most people will know who you are, but... Okay. Well, my name is Josie Pseudo Howarth. I am... Let's see... Game journalist, uh, show host, streamer, lover of communities, someone who loves to pass on hearts every chance that she gets, and a massive and extraordinary fan of all things involving rubber duckies. Do you know about the, the rubber duck project, then? Which one? The, the yellow duck project. Which? Oh, I, okay, I, right. There's a yellow duck project. We were out in the lakes, uh, me and my wife, a while back, and uh, there was uh, we found this little, um, I, think, I think it was just a, a, a crotchet, Crochet, crocheted one? Crocheted, what do you call crochet. it? Crochet. Crochet, that's it. <laughs> crocheted. There you go. One of, one of many criticisms. <laughs> um, and, and we found it, we found one, it had a little label on it, went to a website, and it was some, It was a, you know, to raise awareness for cancer for a, a girl uh, in England. And it was just, it, there'd been thousands of them left over the world, and uh, my wife has done a few, and she's leaving them around. It's just quite interesting, quite a cool little thing to find when you're going for a walk. I didn't know about that, but that is pretty darn awesome. I'll forward you a link afterwards. You should, and I'll have to do something involving geocaching with it. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's people do all kinds of stuff with it. It's quite cool, quite Ooh. cool. But anyway, we also have Lou and Steve with us today, as you can see. Uh, no Sam, unfortunately. Sam is yet again. I think he must have a girlfriend or something. He, he must have. He must have. You know, just abandoned us. Abandoned us, geeks. <laughs> Nothing to say. No. Don't, don't uh, agree with me. I was going to make a bros before hoes comment, but I kind of fell with <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've... Uh, sure. Yeah, we've we've all already insulted the uh, the guest and probably all the audience, <laughs> but hey, I'm sure there's much more to come. Anyway, the, today's show is about gaming communities. Um, there is a little bit of swearing in this show, just in case you are easily offended. I would uh, turn off now. Um, and obviously, um, we, you know, we, we just generally talk for a couple of hours about a subject today is gaming communities. Josie happens to be a, a very big uh, community person, I would say. Uh, your main MO is community, I would, I would, I would say. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a massive, massive, massive supporter of empowering communities. So that's pretty much one way to put it. Because you, uh, you previously did a show called The Campfire. Um, Correct. Which which uh, again, most of our viewers will have seen before anyway, I imagine, but um, that was about communities basically every week. Soon. Oh yeah, every oh, cool. single week cool. it was uh, whatever we could discuss involving a community uh, from how to help support people who are starting them to even how do you talk to the people who are known as community managers in the gaming industry. Mm. And it, we've had some on. It was brilliant. And uh, as much as I miss my time with Blank Space and with Screenager, it's not the last you're going to see of us. Of course not. You had a, a good uh, dynamic going there, I think. Aww. I, it was I great enjoyed being watching the shows. constantly. <laughs> yes, pretty much constantly. But all, I think all the shows are like that. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's uh, move on to gaming communities. Does anybody know where to start? Because, I mean, I haven't been involved in a community for so long now. Well, I, no, I take that back. I'm involved in communities right now, but I'll talk about that Yeah, in a bit. I, th I think we, we've come from a, a, a time when we've kind of done, already done quite a lot of the community stuff. And I think it's fair to say that that, uh, that you, Chris, uh, and Steve, and myself are all quite um, apprehensive about communities now, shall I say? Like we've had some bad experiences in the past with communities and now we are unwilling to get too involved, almost like a bad relationship sort of thing. I mean, back before the internet, you know, back when, <laughs> back in the day, I remember, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I do, I do remember becoming part of communities when the internet started becoming quite a big thing and everyone started getting home dial up and things like that. And then that, it's, it's really weird saying that. It does make me sound really old. That I imagine if there's any younger viewers watching, we were around when the internet started. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, just, uh, I, I got involved in quite a lot of gaming communities, mainly clans um, and mainly 
uh, leagues, you know, go, jo joining Quake Two leagues. Um, I was in a Tribes Clan. Uh, I was involved in uh, a few, a few of the like organised league matches. I did a bit of admin in myself in matches, and but I, I was never. I don't know. I, I don't. I, it, there was never a huge community then. It was very close knit. It was yeah. a very small group of people. You know, you guys actually have led to a really fantastic way to actually start this conversation. I, I kind of want to put on the, I'm the group therapist. Allow me to help you through your issues <laughs> involving community. Okay. So what you're saying, Lewis, is that you've had problems in the past that are more or less made you apprehensive about getting involved in communities. Yeah. If you do any kind of game development at all, you're going to be apprehensive because there's always going to be the naysayers, no matter who you deal with, and they can actually bring you down and take up a shit ton of your time. Woohoo! First curse. Okay. No, no. Then someone someone have... swore before you. I don't think I'm so. Sure, I'm sure we got a swear word in already. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Go on. No, it's all good. Twunk it. And, and, and <laughs> whatever you said earlier, that word. <laughs> and, and, and for you, Steve, I haven't heard your, your, your sort of history, so I'd like to know from you your history of gaming communities and how you currently feel about these things. It sounds like it's going to go very deep. Good. Um, I started off my gaming community pretty much with Lou. Uh, we used to live just over the road from each other. I, it's it's okay. I've, I've I've gotten over that now, um, and I mean we used to play games socially together anyway, um, and that's how it kind of developed for me. It was a case of it was friends getting together and using games as like a social activity, and then with the advent of the internet and things like that, that started to spread a little bit further. But because of limitations with bandwidth, we couldn't really play anyone that was excessively far away. Um, and then we joined uh, a clan together, which was uh, SQS. Was it Oblivion before that? Oh, Lou, yeah, you were in Oblivion. Clan. Yeah, so yeah. I've, I've, led, I've led a few clans myself. And um, I was just basically... Uh, was, well, <laughs> early on, early on when, you, when you first... Uh, when you and Lou were being social with games, I'd imagine you'd yeah. have taken a console. This sounds yeah, this is exactly what being it was. Being social with games. But I imagine you either took a console or a PC or, or something and you, you took it to to your friend's house. We Whereas it's very different now, isn't it? With yeah, we would, we'd literally carry a TV across the road to each other's houses and then Put connect our to PlayStations back. together. So yeah, you couldn't yeah. see each other. <laughs> yeah, or, or better still, like side by side and just tell each other not to look at each other's screen. <laughs> and then know, call Cheater works. out. <laughs> yeah. Don't you now dare see, look at that screen. That makes me feel really old, and I know that some of you guys are older than I am because I'm not that old. My gaming <coughs> communities started at a tabletop. Right. Oh, Before no, I, there well, were video games. I did tabletop that's, gaming as well. That's, that's actually a community. Yeah, you see, Taking this is, it way back. See, we, we, we kind of... Most of the things that we talk... I'm not saying we can't talk about top tabletop or anything like that. I'm just saying that most of the things we focus on is, is electronic games here. We have yes. talked about other types of games a little bit but usually it's electronic games but it's really interesting that it is the same thing when you think about it that the community that i had in my war in the games workshop near me in in the one in middlesbrough in fact um I, I used to go there every single week a couple of times a week sometimes i pedal there on my bike all seven seven or eight miles of it and uh you know just played games all night but that was a little community i never even thought of it that way really well that's the thing you know most of us who are, I would call us almost veteran or ancient gamers, we've all had experiences that have started before the advent of this thing called fiber. Back in the day when you used to have to send your chess moves on a horse across, you know, whatever land so that the person who you were playing with knew where to move the chess pieces. That was, you know, long distance game playing back then. But that's where our foundational roots started. So we were used to seeing each other face to face. Now, we've had an evolutionary step in communities. We've had communities go from every Everybody knowing everybody because you live next door and you stole or maybe you have fancied your best friend's girl or or maybe their sister or something I don't know people have weird lives or your but, best friend or or they yeah or they fancy yeah anyway so <coughs> you, you've, you've had that kind of closeness and niche that sort of niche and everybody would influence each other's likes whether it be in the type of games you played or potentially the music and that's part of what makes a community a community then we moved into this digital world where it was because of that bandwidth issue that you were talking about steve you really couldn't get people to see what you looked like or you could be anybody that you wanted to be because mm. bulletin boards and muds and irc i mean come on multiplayer notepad for the win 
you could do so much with that, have so many different communities and be close to people. You could talk about the latest news. You could do whatever you wanted to do in that community, but you didn't have a facial identity. But now the speeds have gotten so fast. Look at us. You know, we're all in different parts of a country, although it's all the same country. But we are seeing each other visually, having a communication, and you can do that in communities now. It made me think, um, my computer at the moment is struggling a little bit with streaming some of the more complex stuff we do. Uh, lots of audio stuff and there are all kinds of craziness going on. But the, it makes me think that it just that would not have been even remotely possible without dual core CPUs, and they're only fairly recent. And the, 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 Josie's right, this, this takes, takes us kind of onto the the new technologies that are coming out, the fact that we've got, um, we can now look at each other. We can now, we, we've had team speak for a while. Audio is easier to transmit, it's less bandwidth, but video takes a lot out of the computer that it's encoding it and decoding it. And it also takes a lot out of the bandwidth because there's a lot of information. Every frame, every second, it has to send the same information or a variation of that information. So you, it is, it's, it's really interesting. This, this, this interaction here, I'm just repeating what Josie said, but it it, it kind of just made me click that you're doing it with a lot more arm movement. Yeah, so. no, I'm I'm flapping. You around know what a you lot. could do? You could take it that one step further and actually say, my gaming community or the community that you and I and Lewis and Steve are involved in right now is a product of ones and zeros. Ta da! Because yes, that's well, literally all it is. Yeah, a little. Everything is being transferred as ones and zeros. But that kind of binary community doesn't really exist because humans are gray. We have shades of gray of things mm. we like, things we dislike, you know, how and why you get involved in a community to begin with. Now, are you currently, because I've heard Lewis, I've kind of heard a little bit from you, Chris, and Steve sort of avoided the question to the best of his <laughs> ability by not being able to finish his statement, and I'm going to hold you to this until I get an answer. She's also taking over hosting the show as well, by the way, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am I'm watching to. you with my beady eye. We've worked hard on Resonance Arcade. We've got all yeah, six people that subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can tell no, me No, go on. Up. Go on, Josie. Go what, on. what I want to know is how you currently feel about communities and gaming and gaming communities in general. I mean, I know Lewis is apprehensive. Pick a word to describe. One word. Should be easy, because then you don't have to make a sentence. Just one word. <laughs> uh, avoidance. I actively don't um, participate in many gaming communities. Or even multiplayer games, I imagine, these days. Yeah. Um, I don't play a massive amount of multiplayer games these days. I used to, um, back in what you'd probably call my, com my gaming heyday. Um but not anymore these days. And it is an element that I have been burned before. But mostly it's just, I, I, I really can't be bothered with the chew. Yeah, I think I've it's got better things to be doing with my time. And if I can have an enjoyable game with people that I know are my friends, I know that I'm going to have an enjoyable time. We're going to have an enjoyable dialogue. Um, that is a, a section of my time that I can put aside that I know is going to be worthwhile. If I just join a random public, then... I could, well, potentially just waste the the little time that I put aside for gaming. So, like for me, the time that I do spend playing multiplayer games, infrequent as it is, is quite precious. So I I, I really want to enjoy that, and I feel <clears throat> I I feel like if I were to go into a public forum and play them, then I could potentially be wasting my time or just not enjoy it as much. Yeah, I think so. It's me being a coward, basically. <laughs> the thing is, we come from, we come from quite a small community. When when we were playing Quake, we were in a community where everyone knew each other. It was like a little village. Mm. It's like a, a a walled community. All three of the uh, leagues, all the people that were in th all three of the leagues, all knew each other, and there was yeah, we knew it everyone. It was very tight. And then, as uh, as the technologies increased, as more people have started playing games, these communities have grown from from villages to cities. Mm. And it's become it's it's almost kind of a xenophobic reaction to that in that you you want to associate with your friends. You're used to being in this small, tight knit group with all of your own kind of in jokes and and your own ways of doing things. And you kind of know that you're always going to enjoy it playing with your friends. And then you know the the, the rise of the toxic gamer, um, yeah. the counter Counter Strike community, when people started coming onto games <clears throat> just to annoy other people, trolling. That's when it started to get really... That, that's when we stopped really playing and multiplayer with other people. LAN parties also became more 
frequent for us personally and we used to go and socialize with our friends i would quite often and i don't know if this was an excuse to my normal friends that that aren't gamers um i i, I told everybody that i was going to land parties and i told them exactly what they were but i told them that i was going to see my friends not to play games because generally that's what i was doing i don't know if that's me just making an excuse for being a geek i don't know but i also you know it, it obviously means you know something as well it, it the fact that you're socializing with people that is a community of i mean our community is was quite big at one point in terms of our clan and our you know local group of gaming friends and everybody used to play together and real life gets in the way you you know you people move people get girlfriends etc and it kind of you grow up <laughs> essentially and your community breaks up and it, you know that's happened See, to ours, hasn't it? Definitely, yeah. I mean, there's there's very few remnants of what we had that's left, and we've literally we've beaten our IRC IRC channel's dead horse, to, you know, to death. We've we've just it's it's now there's two people hanging around in it, you know. After all the the years of having twenty or thirty people in there constantly, it's just it's now decided to go yeah, for some reason. Nine ninety eight to two thousand thirteen, I guess. Hmm. That's a long time for a for a channel and a, a group of people. Pretty much, you unchanging group of people as well. Yeah. To eventually fizzle out. But well, it's different. Our our experience of communities, obviously, Josie, is very different from yours. I mean, ours is a I lot more insular. So I think. I'm not necessarily <clears throat> certain. I mean, I ran massive, massive raid progression guild in World of Warcraft. I have done incredibly tiny, small focus merc groups. Um, I have done four people total kind of communities as well and i i think each one has its merits and each one has its flaws in the end uh one of the key things that we have uh we stressed when we were doing the campfire is you have to find the community that best fits you and to be honest in today's day and age with the evolving time of oh i actually need to go to a job to pay for this addiction i have <laughs> called gaming I'm not really addicted. I can stop at any time. Ooh, DLC. No, no. You know, it's it's one of those things. But, you know, you guys had a close-knit community that stuck together a lot. Mine was sort of an evolution in its its circumstance. I started out with a, in WoW, for example, I had a very small group of people. I was a part of a guild. The leadership disappeared. And then I'm like, well, we can't really do anything if the leadership's not there. Let's go form our own. So we had a small group, and that group became the massive, massive raiding guild. But it wasn't something that just happened overnight. We didn't go, hey, we're going to raid. We just started having more people join, people who ran dungeons with us, people who just happened to be friends of a friend who heard about us. And it grew and grew, and then finally they wanted to do something different. So goals changed. Things changed. Your goals, your community's goals that you guys had have changed. Yeah. Either... The leadership has decided, you know, we have a different goal now, or the individual members have made the choice. It's time for something new and different. Your, your goals have changed. It doesn't make it a bad thing. I mean, I understand the troll concept. Although, Lewis, you and I in a dark alley, man, seriously, <laughs> do not blame the Counter-Strike community for hmm. this because it's not their fault. And I, I just want you to know that because I was a Counter-Striker. And one of the things we love to do... So it was, was you, was it? ...fail horribly. <laughs> I, I was a part of a clan known as like the Pot Noodle Lamers. We, we, and we, we created a joke failed clan. horribly. Yeah, we created a joke clan called Macaques and we played and deliberately trolled the community because they were. Oh, <laughs> we... So it was you! <laughs> what, did I, what did I say about hypocrisy earlier on? What did I say? I said. <laughs> We did that because we saw, we saw, we felt threatened. I guess our community and our our game <coughs> was being threatened by this new upstart community of people who, I don't know. I guess. I guess Are you afraid of change, Lewis? Not really. No, I, I'm not. I'm, I, I embrace change, um, but I am change for the better. Change the interest. Well, you. I think I don't think anyone's uh, likes change for the worst, are there? Exactly. I don't think anyone looks for that. Um, but I don't know. I, I guess I guess we did feel threatened. Our, our game was dying, and we were sticking with our game. Um, there was new games coming up, coming up at the time, and we were just hanging on to it. And our community was was quite extreme. I would say, you either you you either got on with us, 
or mostly you didn't and you left because you were offended in some way by us. Though, to be fair, there was a lot of inter-clan kind of swapping and going on a lot of the time, and a lot of politics as well, um, with the with the Quake Two Rocket Arena Two community, which is the community we're talking about back in the nineties. And it was, you know, there was clans from all over the world, but there were everybody, everybody kind of, I don't know, intertwined, you know, kind of. But there was kind of an overall bitterness and resentment for the fact that our game, you know, feeling like it was at its prime, was suddenly losing to these new games like Counter Strike. You know what really, you know what really did it for me and put me off. I think finally for that particular community was when uh, the big clans, the clans that do all the games. I'm talking about Spooks, 4K. Um, you know, the, the 4. Uh, there was another big clan as well around at the time, I can't remember. But they did everything. They did Counter-Strike, Unreal Tournament, Quake, Quake 2. They did absolutely everything under the sun. They probably moved on. They're probably still around now, 4K, I imagine. Or I, I, okay. They were a few years ago when I was checking yeah. things out. But they, And it, it's like those clans came in. They were commercial clans with sponsorship and all kinds of all kinds of like stuff that we we didn't purposefully avoid. I mean, we, we were pretty good at the game that we played, but we, we played it because we enjoyed that particular mod. We didn't play it because we wanted fame and fortune and be pr to be professional or anything like that, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. That. Maybe it isn't the rise of Counter-Strike, but maybe it's more the rise of uh, CPL and things like that. Pro gaming. Yeah, maybe that's what it was, because we were, we were essentially pro gamers before pro gaming was a thing, if you know what well, I mean. And pro gamers I, I say, hate saying that. It sounds really horrible, but it, that's basically what happened. Yeah. But we, were, we like... were we were a very, very niche section of that pro game, that, that <clears throat> serious gamer market, you know? I wouldn't say pro because obviously we weren't making money for it, but we we were a skilled client. I did. And I, think, I think, again, there was, there was the idea that, that suddenly there was these clans that were arising who had players who were sportsmen and women. The sort of people who could keep the cool when they were playing in tournaments for money or for, you know, in a professional sense. Whereas we couldn't keep our cool. So we, we had the skill but not the the temperament for it. We were also, I mean, I don't know if this is, again, maybe an age thing. We were also a um, quite a young clan. There was older members, but I I mean, I was the leader and I was I was running it from, what, 98? How long ago was that? You were 17, I think, 16, 17. Yeah, and looking back on how I used to be, I, I can see a, 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 a vast <laughs> difference between the stress that games used to cause me and the amount I used to shout at people and, and feel responsibility when we lost and, you know, have to answer to everyone else in the community. You know, all of the other clans, you had to go and organise games and do all of the. And it is like, <clears throat> I just got annoyed when things went wrong and everything always goes wrong in communities. You, you have to accept that, you know? Well, humans aren't inherently <clears throat> perfect. However, Steve's been too quiet. I've he just has. been listening to everyone. I kind of agree with the uh, the sentiment that Lou put across that. The pro gamer killed it for me, I think. Um, much in the same way, I'm going to draw a parallel to, uh, uh, to football. And when you start bringing too much money into something, it ruins uh, what made that activity fun in the first place because it stops being about enjoyment it then starts becoming about a result hmm. Hmm. and I still play games for enjoyment I don't play, I never have the intention to play for money yeah. uh, it's it's never been really my aim interest me. I mean I have, I said, I, I briefly said I have won a few <clears> competitions <throat> and I, I think you know I've won a bit of hardware and stuff at LAN parties and you know things like that but we all have, I think everyone at a LAN party who's went to must have won some swag at some point but you know it's um I don't know, I kind of... I think I used to hold the pro gamers, and I'm talking about the Threshes of the world and the the, sh the shub, Shubs of the world, you know, the, the, the old Quake, Quake and Quake 2 players. I hold those in high regard because they used to do it because they were just bloody good at the game mm. and they didn't get paid packets. And now it's a thing and these peop you know, people of gamers past, they don't, they don't, they haven't got any admiration for it from the people who currently find it trendy and I think that's the same thing I have the problem with fashion and all kinds of other things like that you know it, <laughs> it just annoys me that it keeps repeating itself constantly and you know game you don't is, happen game to is the same. drop bands when they sign with record labels do you? No. When they go mainstream do you leave them behind? There is there is no? some of this there is something of that in certainly my um, approach to it 
Um, I do feel like if things go amiss, <clears throat> I don't want to be a part of it anymore. I, yeah. I'm not like that. I, I don't mind. You know, when, when Facebook bought Oculus, I didn't I didn't mind, really. Um, it didn't bother me. I, th- I thought it would get more support, if anything. You know, when, when Google buys all these different software developer kits that I use all the time or, or you know, brings out a new thing, I, I don't mind because they're going to improve it, you know, in one way, shape, or form for me as a commercial professional, you know? Yeah, but that's kind of different to uh, the example that Josie brought up about, like, bands because when a band gets signed, it doesn't necessarily mean that the music improves. It means that they now have to conform to what the label wants them to do. To an extent, so, it's usually the it same all depends. Thing to be to an doing. Extent, it depends on the deal that they have. It does depend on the deal. The young it, bands, it, it, it yes, does, it's a very broad spectrum. Yeah, I mean, but, you, 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 you get Metallica, for example. A bad example, I know, but you get Metallica telling the label what they're doing, basically, and the label might come in and give them suggestions. But at the end of the day, they're, it's they've yeah, got respect it's Metallica, for it. Metallica, you know? so. They could just go to another label, but you have bands that are in a position whereby they, ne- they necessarily don't have the choice to move between labels. So the label says jump, and they've got to say how high. And that that's the me, same in every situation, really. Is, yeah, there's always but, someone above you and bigger than you. But then it starts to take away from from like the art of what it was meant to be in the first place. <laughs> Music isn't about making money; it's about an expression. Hmm. So when that becomes about making money, that expression gets lost, it gets polluted, it gets diluted. You and you think really that's... need to watch Iggy Pop's John Iggy Pop's John Peel talk. Why? Well, I haven't. He's seen just that. done one, but what you're talking about is a lot of the stuff he's talked about. Um, but I, I notice you guys are so heavily focused on this concept of the pro gamer and the pro clans and things like that. That is about this big of the gaming communities that exist. Oh, I know that. I've, I've been involved in lots of... you guys of... are still apprehensive about gaming communities. I'm I'm more involved. The reason I don't <laughs> get... Right, the sole reason that I personally do not do gaming communities these days, or I don't do... I don't join clans and guilds, mainly, is the amount of time that they require. I don't have that time anymore. That's the only reason I don't do it. It's not because I don't want to socialise. It's not because I'd, I'd have the same opinions as Lou and Steve, you know, that, that I, I, I don't, I don't tend to, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to worry about like the people in the clans. I, I get on with it. I'll get on with people if I need to, you know, um, I don't know. I can't, I'm, I'm losing myself. Someone save me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like watching you struggle. <laughs> Right, don't uh, look at me the, uh, I'm the one posing the no, problem uh, here <laughs> admittedly the pro gamer bit is only a very small part of a much bigger picture and you don't uh, have to be involved in the pro gamers community no, no, no of, of, of course you don't and it's not something that I have ever tried to get involved with so maybe my my opinions on the subject aren't really that valid <laughs> everyone's opinion is valid I don't care who you are No, I've, 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 I mean they're valid for me obviously it's like it, valid for it's the... like people saying if you can't if you don't vote you haven't got an opinion. That's I, I hate that more than anything. Don't go there with Steve. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm Steve not. He'll hurt you over that. It's it's um... it's another show that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Gaming politics. Wow, uh, there are quite a few. Yeah. Oh God, not the moment. No, let's let's avoid that for the moment with all the gaming politics that's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I know we want to be topical, but that's that's not a topic that we should probably be treading to. So, anyway, instead of flogging this dead horse, there's a lot of dead horses in this uh, show so far, why don't we move on to something else? Because we t- we've been talking about the different types of communities, um, kind of. <laughs> there's so many in in terms of gaming. I mean, we've talked about previously uh, dev communities, the indie gaming community. There's a lot of people that, on Twitter, for example, I see people who are sole retro gamers, and that's all they do, and they post pictures, and they're like, just got this new thing to the post, that's cool. And And those people form a community around them not just their following, but they also usually start blogs and websites and all kinds of things. And that is a little community in itself. And every single genre of game pretty much has, well, not That's genre. again the technology thing, though, isn't it? I mean, with, on the internet now, because everyone's got permanent connectivity, um, everyone's got lots of bandwidth. Oh, over there. Oh. Uh, and so on. I don't know. Josie, <laughs> don't know. Josie's messed up. Keep, keep going. <laughs> um, it means that, that all these... <laughs> Everyone can find a niche. There is yeah. a, literally a community for everything. It's it's hard to not find a community if you're interested in something. Somewhere out there, a, you know, a single Google search away is your community mm-hmm. that you can join and and, and get on with. Um, 
So I don't, I don't think. So I, I don't know what was I was responding to something you said there. I was talking about we we we're rubbish <laughs> on this show, aren't we? We haven't we don't oh, even know what trend we're talking out of. Well, uh, motor or Mooter has brought up something that I think is well worth at least looking at. Although I have to say, Mooter, you've had a lot of amazing things to say in chat so far. So. Yes, and thank you very much for uh, for helping. When there's four people on the show, I, I don't tend to take much attention to the chat, and I probably it, should. It can be no incredibly more. difficult to balance a conversation, keep everything going, and uh, you know, pay attention to the chat. It, it's it's a skill. It you is. learn it. I'm don't getting, worry. I'm I will at teach it. you. Sin- oh, I'm just joking. Um, but uh, so yeah, Buddha um, points out. Um, I think it's the people in the communities that kind of put me off that are wanting to be a pro gamer example you get a headshot and playing cs and all you hear is noob and kind of a horrible taste in your mouth now see this is the thing um when it comes to the gaming communities and the way that people treat each other i think it's worth mentioning that in some communities someone calling you a noob is actually a good thing and and other people it's actually an insult it depends on the type of communities you have i mean i can't tell you how many times my husband will call me a noob because i've done something strange in a game um it's you know it's same with any it's, insult though you're always insult your best friends don't you or yeah. the people that you're well, to at least the british people do yeah yeah americans are a little different you should see me honestly a fly on the wall but, um, that with my bestest bestest friends in the world i'm i'm horribly offensive to them in every way shape and form but it's just people, you know, it's just how I am. Probably why I struggle so, so much to be professional on these shows. Um, <laughs> poor Mythalorus says it's not being able to play very well that puts you off. See, that's <laughs> the thing, you know, you guys, <laughs> you three have the kind of opinion that I have. I play a game, when I sit down and go, I'm going to play a game, I am looking for the entertainment that I can get from the game. Either a brilliant story, or fantastic graphics, or amazing um, art, or uh, amazing music, or heck, even fantastic and dynamic gameplay. You know, mm-hmm. I'm looking to be entertained. I have either had someone kindly gift me something, or I have put hard-earned cash that could have been gone to something else like, gee, new socks, because my socks have holes in them, but this game just came out. You know, I want to be entertained. However, communities where you have those, like you were saying before, you like Lewis, your small communities because everybody knew they're in jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you started talking about something like water or what have you, and people would think you're talking about the drink when in fact you're talking about the time someone fell into a fountain at a game convention or whatever, you know. There's there's so many little in-jokes, but you have to be willing to make those with new people as well. And that, I, was, I was just going to say that. It's, they're all, those kind of in-jokes are also very unwelcoming, aren't they, to newcomers? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you see and that in every si- social bad. situation, not just gaming situations. But it's also, I mean, even at work, you know, whether you're in, like, uh, was I think it was, uh, yeah, Mithalor who pointed out, large programming teams tended to have roots and clans and things like that. There are actually groups of people who, from their infancy, going to each other's houses on their bikes and bringing their little consoles, yelling cheater at each other, all of those people started out and grew up together and got more involved in technology or whatever industry they happen to be in. But no matter what team you're working in, that's a community into itself, and it's got its inherent problems. But when you have a culture... And that's what a community is. Community is literally the boundary where your culture ends. You know, for you guys, you guys have certain types of jokes you can get away with that you wouldn't be able to get away with, say, perhaps me, because I'm not a part of that type of culture. I have a, a different type of culture when I'm with you guys. But, you know, the culture boundary ends. But allowing people to come in, you can still offer them a chance to come in and learn what that joke was. Tell them the story. Let them learn. The, they you know, was may have been one of those you had to be there kind of moments, but at least they know where the foundation came from. You can still be welcoming. I mean, this is why you still have people LFG, LFC. You know, you still have people in today's day and age, and it's massive. There are massive websites dedicated to finding communities for gaming. What is LFG and LFC? Look at LFG, looking for guild. Oh, right. LFC, yes, sorry. looking for clan. It's been so long since I've done any of that, I can't remember any of the specific acronyms. LFG <laughs> can also be grouped depending upon yeah. your game, but nine times out of ten, that's a, a temporal yeah. thing that occurs for a fixed period of time to accomplish a goal or not, depending on the game you're playing and if people can't figure out how to not stand in the red stuff. But, you know, <laughs> the, the community itself, it's its culture, and the people who are involved make the culture. And if you guys are apprehensive, anyone trying to welcome you into a culture is going to have to overcome your psychological traumas 
<laughs> to help you get into a community. So in a way, I hate to say it, you're kind of shooting yourselves in the foot, not like you're actively looking for a community, but I'm just saying, you know, you can be cautious without I, I know, I putting know, the brick up, if I, you know what I mean. I know how Lou and Steve feel. If they, if they, if they genuinely are slightly scared, and that's a you know a, an honest that's opinion a, of that's of, a fair thing. Uh, that's fine. I understand Who that because I'm a little bit like that in social situations. Going out to town, for example, these days, I'm not like I, I I've been a social butterfly, but now I just don't want to do it, and I feel quite. If anyone invites me out, I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure about it. I don't know what I'm scared of. Just not both, you know, just to know. I'd rather be sat at home doing my own thing. But when it comes to a community itself. I don't know. I I can overcome it. I can ask the right questions and make sure that I try and get to know people and ask questions of them, not just about the game, but how the person is behind the screen name. You know, it's and again getting on. Um, the, the, there's a little bit of um, camera shyness as well with, with me. I do sometimes feel a little bit funny about coming on camera, or used to. I don't now because we do weekly streams, so it's very different. But uh, there has been a, a situation in the past where I, I wouldn't have rang Lou on Skype just out of the blue like I do now. Because I just I'd feel a bit mm. weird about it. Not not because it's Lou, just because of me. Mm. And so that fear is a part of it, you think? I said I can understand it, but I can I know that it's there. I know that 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 it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. If I if I don't get along with the people in a guild or a clan, if I did want to get into it, I would overcome, you know, I'd, I'd overcome it. If I didn't want to be part of that clan for whatever reason, I'd just walk off and find another one, you know? I, but you know what I always do? If I start a new game and I ever want to get involved in a community, I join a community, realise how badly it's run, and then start my own. Gen I know I'm sorry, sorry, but that is generally how I, how I have done it in the past. I've tried to, to be second in command to people or I've tried to help them out with the leadership and things like that. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. I'm definitely not perfect at it. No one is. But I have, you know, I, I, I do tend to gravitate towards the leadership part of things, you know. And that's just the way I've, I've, I've always been with everything. You have always been, yeah. You, you've always been kind of a natural leader, I guess. But I'm not, I don't particularly think I'm particularly charismatic or, or even uh, competent yeah, most of the time, you know? <laughs> but, no, but you do like to take control of things, don't you? And people tend to let me, and I don't I don't think I'm forceful with it. I used to be very, very forceful. I don't think I'm too forceful these days. I'm a lot more laid back. You've mellowed. I, You've I have mellowed, me mellowed a lot, but I'm still yeah. in control, bitches. I think the thing is, the weird thing, the weird thing about this is, is it's, it is exclusive to games with me, because I'm quite happy to join communities in, in other things like development and you know the indie game community and stuff like that I've, I've joined quite a few quite recently as well um and there's no problem there it's it is just with games i think it's more about the fact that you have got a comfortable spot with games with with your friends now and we, you've always got new usually always got someone to play a game that you want to play with whereas your, your interests and the other groups that you may join, and this applies to me definitely, they, they change all the time. I used to be very involved in the music scene around here. I used to be very involved in going to the cinema, and there was a number of people I used to go and do that with, you know, and, and it changes, and I don't see those people at all now. And it's the same with, I think, games. We're just, we're just comfortable with each other. Listening to you, uh, you guys talking has kind of made me realise something that I'm just a massive introvert. <laughs> I haven't really got any desire to uh, to socialise with that many people, to be honest, and that's kind of decreased over the uh, the, the recent years. And I, I have got a comfortable position when it comes to games because I, I, I've I've got you guys if I want to ever play a, a multiplayer game. When it comes to other things outside game, and then again I've got my kind of core circle of friends. Anything that falls outside that, I'd normally do solo. I prefer solo, but I, I do prefer working I, on my own. Even though I say now I, I would be worried about going into town, I'd still go and do it if I really fancied doing it. You know, I'd still go and sit in the local pub and find someone to talk to. It sounds really <laughs> sad, but you know what I mean. Unfortunately, as I've said it on the stream a number of times, all my friends are miles away now, so I, I you know, I don't really have anyone to go out with. So maybe another thing on it. Anyway. Smallest violin in the world, blah de blah. Yeah, I just want to address something that's been said in the chat quite a bit, but a lot of people have been talking about how they feel like being a noob, being not very good at games, is in some way inhibiting them from being part of a community. And I don't mm. think that should be. I think the best part of being in the gaming community for me was when I wasn't very good at the game. 
because that's when you that's when you can ask people questions and it gives you almost an excuse to be social with people because you've got to ask them to find out what the hell's going on you've got to ask for help you've got to join people and team up to, to get things done in games so if anything being not very good at a game is probably the best part from a community aspect when you start to get really good at the game then, then if you want to help if you can help other people you can pass it on you can do yeah um, if you're good enough you know if you <laughs> What? What's wrong? What would you keep pulling faces, Josie? What, what have I said? Am I, I, be, am I saying a lot of things? Because I'm, I'm now expecting Lewis to turn around and go, yeah, screw that. I got what I needed from that community. I'm moving on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, when, when I um, just not long before I finished playing EverQuest, I started to. I think I told you about this before when we did a stream. Um, I, I started to help out new players. Um, and I did it in role play as well. So I actually role played and, and helped with the quests that were in the game and, and added to those quests, doing my own little rewards and things for new players. And I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but obviously, it didn't it didn't last very long because you can, there's only so long you can do that for before you you can't do it anymore because it's not part of the actual game itself. It doesn't give you any progression to help noobs. It only gives you progression to do the game properly. Hmm. Which is a shame, really. I I I really enjoy um, helping people in any way I can. I'll be honest. In 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 games or in game dev, I don't I don't think I do in games. I'll be honest. It it's never really been the case. I was watching someone play Wars um, DayZ the other day, and it was this big American um, hillbilly dude with his with a vest on and shouting down the mic. And he, he was he was really entertaining, but he just kept walking around people. And he had this little guy that he was helping, and he was help he was he was showing him around and what to do. He was called he called him Tonto, which I thought was quite funny because he couldn't ever hear the guy because his mic was terrible. But he just kept walking up to people and like talking to them for a bit, asking them what they were doing, and then stabbing them. And that was basically what it was. It was being nice and then and then nicking all the stuff off them. I, th- I thought it was funny to watch, but it was if I was in that game, I'd. Have, I'd have, uh, I'd have wanted to destroy him, you know? But see, what you've just done there is the classic hypocrit- hypocritical human stance that we take. Everybody is perfectly fine with someone else suffering at the hands of somebody else. But heaven forbid that suffering get turned around and placed on you. Yeah, now, no, I, I, you, You've stated that, but that's the thing. You know, I'm hearing from you guys some rather interesting things. And this comes from someone who's run that community show, done community management, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm hearing from you guys an awful lot about how your personal experiences have impacted how you view communities. Mm -hmm. Can you, out of curiosity, take yourselves out of that situation and actually look at what is really good about the community, besides just the help that you can get if you're new? Totally. I mean, well, so sell it to me. You want me to sell gaming communities to you? Why should I come out of my shell and expose myself (laughs) to the gaming community? Which gaming community, though? Do you want to know why? Because you don't want to. That's the thing. It's a matter of, I mean, you got, you've stated that you're an extrovert and by all means, be a, or an introvert, be an introvert. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. It may take you a longer time to find a group of people to enjoy yourself with, or you could be lucky enough that you were raised near some of them and they're still a part of your life. Not everybody's going to have that experience. I mean, so uh, you don't necessarily want them. From a game, I mean, I, I enjoyed the, the gaming communities when I was involved in them and like with these guys, when it was fun. Um... To me, it seemed to lose that enjoyment, so I stopped doing it. When we grew up, that's the only thing I can put it down to. I I don't think I have grown up. (laughs) No, I haven't either. I think it's more when we took it too seriously. Oh, when 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 we got to a certain level, when we got so good at the game that it became it it became frustrating to be to start losing. You know, it's all it's almost that it's going back to that. You know, we we we've. Mm. We've talked about people See, having tantrums and stuff because they're losing, but it, it, we've all done it. Do you know why I used to shout at people when they didn't do what we'd planned and what we'd um, practiced? It wasn't because I was I, I didn't want to win. I, I didn't want to lose. Hang on. I, I, it wasn't because I wanted to win. <laughs> For any Double negative. Yeah. You don't uh, want to win. It wasn't because I, I didn't... Oh, my God. I didn't want to win, basically. But... I really cared about the teamwork. I cared about the amount of effort that I put into the team and the amount of effort we put into practicing twice a week for a couple of hours every every, every Tuesday and Thursday or whatever it was. And 
and then everyone just ignoring what we'd done because we were in a live situation and people panicked because it was really high ten it was high tension back when we used to play some of the league games but I, I i'm taking myself away from my personal experiences i can totally understand the 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 benefit of a community as i said i could integrate into a community if i if i want to or if i had the choice and the community accepted me of course i think that that the only thing that stops me is the time but as yeah in terms of um uh, in terms of seeing the value obviously the value is in um learning from each other you know we've already said that once before um it's in having enjoyment with with people that you wouldn't normally have met you wouldn't you wouldn't have met down the street or you wouldn't have met with you know at school or at college or going to a LAN party that's how I met Lou I met Lou going to a LAN party so it was a social situation and another community that we kind of created a community from you know Mm. um and obviously there's also a lot of support as well with communities in terms of for the games that they support we keep forgetting about the games you know we've talked a lot about gaming communities but the games are what makes the community i think to, to me the games have to be has to be there or some kind of product has to be there or some kind of interest has to be there in order for the, a community to form around it and the and i think different games different styles of play form different types of communities as well the oh, quick the quick communities were very quite aggressive and boisterous and there was very few females actually around back then there was there was maybe two that i can think two of two that i can think of and yeah. there was one of them was in our clan um I can't, yeah the, the other one was in gsi and it was the the leader's wife she played um so for you do you believe a community can have multiple games under its belt uh, yes obviously these days i mean okay. especially with modern you say these days which I find interesting because you mentioned earlier the fact that one of the things that started turning you off about communities were those big clans that mm. came in and played all the different games and yep. how dare they invade my game because, because they were doing it game. they were doing it for publicity and they were absorbing all of the games into their entourage essentially you know they they, they wanted more exp- they, they did something great for games they got more exposure for them I'm not saying that they were all bad but in terms of our little tight knit community it felt invaded when they came along I think that's how I yeah. felt, and that's my redeeming memory of how our gaming, uh, how, how our clan, how the gaming part of our clan stopped. You know, the, the the online playing competitively that stopped when all of those clans started appearing. So there you go. Mm. Did I answer any any of your question there, Josie? With the uh, you did to a point. I I think you know you you stated that. Uh, the types of games can actually impact the types of community and obviously that's that's a given. I mean, you look at the game design behind things like League of, Le- League of Legends and it actually inspires a culture of backstabbing and hatred towards your party members even though they may have been your best friends for 12 years and you guys go to do a League of Legends thing and one person makes a single mistake and it can lose a match versus a game where everybody has to pull their own weight and you know hey once you pull the weight it's all good someone's made a mistake no big deal because someone else can do something to balance out the fact that a mistake was had the person who fixed that mistake oh went oh shoot i just made a mistake and you can actually work with each other and that offers a completely different type of dynamic Hmm. forms a completely different type of community i mean if you take a community of and this is going to sound really odd but i'm going to pick it anyway let's take the sims community the people who like to build and orchestrate the houses that they upload to the sims universe and share with the world you know you've you've got a massive community there you put that type of community up against a league of legends community you're going to have two distinctly different cultures Mm. in fact i wouldn't be surprised if the birth of that was some kind of dark my little pony something that was out to eat the world i mean (laughs) that kind of I don't even want to be in the same room if something like that were to happen. No. And yet there are people who can traverse between both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just fine. I have done that before. I've played... Um, My Little Pony? Uh, no, 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 I haven't. Um, there's there's, a, there's have. a new My Little Pony uh, rip-off game, uh, indie game coming out soon called uh, Legend of My Equestria God. or something like that. And uh, it, it it looks it looks fairly interesting. It's like an MMO. <laughs> well, and you said you haven't done My Little Pony, Chris. I haven't, haven't. But I, I I just so happened well, to have been followed this, you find by. This interesting. I happened to have been followed by someone who had a My Little Pony thing. I looked on his website and it was 
You will be yeah. He's developing a game. <laughs> oh, shut <laughs> up. He's, he might even be in the chat. He, he comes and watches me streams every now and again. What was I saying anyway before you... You, 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 were, you were explaining that you were a brony. Yeah. I am a brony. A brony. No, that's not helping. That's not helping at all. Forgotten. Oh, well. Well, what I was well, going to uh, say... That's actually an interesting point. Um, did we stop uh, being involved in the community so much because we couldn't find a game that we enjoyed as much as Quake. All of so, us together as well, maybe. That's yeah, did, it, did yeah. we kind of splinter mm. off that? One person preferred playing this type of game, another type of game, so we couldn't form a cohesive community together. So we just didn't bother at all. I did try a few games after. That's what I was actually saying. I was saying the different clans that I've been in. Um, I did try a few games after Quake too. Um, I, I, I tried quite a few MMOs and joined a guild in everything but EverQuest, I think. I don't think I joined a guild in EverQuest. Uh, definitely was in one or two guilds in um, uh, in World of Warcraft. Uh, I joined a Lineage 2 guild when I was playing that. And I, I did a couple of them at the same time. Not guilds, but um, like a clan and a guild. I was in a tribes clan for a little bit, um, who were actually a very, very good clan. I was amazed I got in <laughs> when I did the trial. But the, um, the it was it was a cool little, very, very tiny community that... But it was really cool because we all thought we had this special game that no one else played. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's it is possible to do it, but it takes a lot of time up. Well, I I think Steve is right. Heaven forbid. You guys, it's every now and again, isn't your it? tastes are going to change. You know, you're always going to have your heydays and quake. That's never going to go away. No. Will you ever be able to recapture that again? Absolutely not. You don't have the time. You don't have the lack of responsibilities. You don't have the ability to put that effort in to do that. Is it the game's fault or the fact that there's not a game out there that could please all of you guys? Probably not. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, in a way, you're right, Chris. Getting old is going to change your priorities and what you look for in a community, whether you look for a community at all. And that's something that I think people tend to forget. You don't have to join a community. Communities exist. And there's good and bad ones, period communities but you do not have to join one your community could be the person sitting next to you in an office and you guys are just playing a land or you guys are playing spider solitaire versus each other it makes no difference that could be your community you don't need a community but communities can sure as hell be fun but yeah. again you're not going to get your heydays if you measure every new game or community that you go up against against something that you would literally classify as the pinnacle of the, that enjoyment factor. I mean, are you really looking back with rose tinted glasses? Uh, personally, no, because I, I had a lot of stress as the clan as the clan leader back then. A and yet lot you of stress. thrive on stress, Chris. I know you. I, I don't get stressed these days because of that. Because of the get, I, I, I used to. I was a very young. Okay. Um, I should say you like responsibility. I love responsibility. I, I don't know why I like it, but I do. I, I like having That's a bit of to put it. things With to do it and comes great responsibility. <laughs> exactly, and the the greater it gets, the greater the responsibility gets as well. Um, I, I've, yeah, I do. I do enjoy leading and and helping, like pushing people in directions. But I don't like telling people what to do if that makes sense. And it's been fairly successful in the things that I have done because I've been very open and clear about what my philosophies are, uh, in t uh, whether it be a clan leader or the, the lead of an indie studio. I'm, I'm always very clear with people so they know exactly what they're going to get from me. And I don't, you know, I apologize if things go wrong and that's maybe why I'm successful with it. I don't know. But I'm only successful in my own life. It's not a wider, like, success, you know? Content. So, if you go. could have the ultimate community right now, what would it be? Ultimate gaming community. Focused around what playing a game. One game. Oof. We're trying to define your ultimate gaming community right now. So, let's nail down what would be that ultimate gaming community for you. Lewis, one game or multiple? For me? Mm hmm. Um,. I quite like the look of some of the um, some of the space space games like Elite Dangerous. That could be so, an interesting community. One game or multiple games for this ultimate gaming community. Oh, oh, I see what the question is. Right. I um, think given the uh, the scope of time that we've all got available, whereas we can't necessarily become experts in one game anymore, we haven't got the time to devote to that. 
I think multiple games would probably be the best option because then you're trading off oh, yeah, so you're you very mean. good at but it. That's at exactly diversity. what we've got. Oh, hold on. We're still defining. So you, would you agree, Chris? Would you say multiple games? Exactly the same reasons as Steve, yeah. And you, Lewis, I'm assuming, because you just shook your head and went, oh, yes, oh, yes? Um, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't actually think I've got a an answer for this. I, I... Well, I, I asked a similar difficult question a few shows ago, and it was basically, if you could only play one game for the rest of your life, what would it be, I think? Was it something like that? Yeah, well, I can't this remember is... what I said. Oh, no, 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 it was console... Ver oh, fuck. I forgot, fucking forgotten. It was a great question, and you all, you all really struggled with it, and... I it's a couple of shows ago and you go and watch YouTube. <laughs> well, but the reason I ask is because now you guys have pretty much, we'll just go with this because we'll go with majority rules kind of a thing. Hello, welcome to community in some respects. So you have now created a community where you guys can play multiple games. Fantastic. Is there anything else or is that just sum it up? No, of course not. I think a community needs some kind of... Um Leadership because you're a responsible no, man? No, I was going to say... I was gonna say um, it needs some kind of like rule system of some sort in order to to be a. See, this is where this is where the lines blur because if you try and define a community, you, as you've said many many times and you've said on the campfire a million times before, this it's it's a huge it's a huge pile of different types. Anything from us three playing games, me, Lou, and Steve playing games together, to mm -hmm. to me going to a, a professional gaming event and you know playing a competition with a clan you know it, or, or a group of other people with you know playing starcraft or something like that all of them are communities mm -hmm. I, I i don't know where to go with this I, 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 I'm, with, <laughs> I, I, I'm still just trying to find that what you guys would consider for yourselves the ultimate community experience i'm because... probably going to re reinforce the um the the, the the idea that you have of me here but i i actually think that the perfect gaming community was the one that we used to have um when we played as sqs in a clan so that's what really bold to say that what made it perfect was it, was, it was it was a it was a great balance of of playing games and hanging out with good friends okay we, it was... so right there are the characteristics see i'm looking for the characteristics of the ultimate community for you guys and i mean you could easily just simply classify it as the umbrella term of our old gaming guild wow that's brilliant and great but it's more or less what made that so special yeah was it actually the people themselves that made it special because i will tell you i have been involved in a hell of a lot of communities and i will also tell you nine times out of ten that title that goes over my character's name means fuck all it is the people who are standing next to me that make it or break it for me. That that's my mm. stance when it comes to communities. Yeah. Because I have I have had people who have stood next to me with that same title over their head, turned around and stabbed me in the back. And I have people who have stood next to me and the moment I started to fall forward from that, immediately reached out, picked me up and said, It's okay. And it made no difference whether we were playing WoW, because that happened to me in WoW. It made no difference whether we were sitting there playing Civ. It made no difference whether we were there doing a stream of us playing Mass Effect 3 and me, for some unknown reason, meleeing a bloody Praetorian and winning. It makes no difference, because it's the people. Whatever title we had made no difference. So you've got friendship, you've got trust, you've got the same intrinsic passion for the same type of game, not necessarily the same game. Because, you know, you can introduce each other. Remember, it goes back to what I said at the start. You got introduced to games because your friend heard about something down the street. Or maybe you guys were watching television together. Hey, let's go play this game together. That's how our gaming culture started was yeah. way back there. It's still the same thing of today, in my opinion. And, yeah. you know, it, it if evolves you're going into to that. But if exactly. it's a new, if you if you want a new gaming experience, it's all about the game itself. A, a new a new community experience, rather. You have to enjoy the game first and foremost before you can really. Well, for before I could commit to a a, a game, I'd have Fair to enough. enjoy the game. Yeah, I think the game was a big part of it. I mean, certainly, um, that's for the how Quake, we Quake stuff. Yeah, it was a huge part of it. Yeah, that's how we, the game itself was the catalyst. Yeah, that, I guess that's how we got together, better. but. We've also had lots of transients that have come through the clan through on, in the years. We had lots of it's happens with every guild. We all know this, you know, every every clan guild. But it, it that only the core members that stuck around pretty much forever 
became actual physical friends as well. You know, we're in the real world, not just online. Um, although we did meet first, I suppose, didn't we? We didn't actually meet online, you and I, Luke. Uh, but yeah, you, I mean, I... you were a latecomer to the clan anyway. What am I talking about? I keep thinking yeah, you were there from the start, but you weren't. You, yeah, you everyone thinks two, that. Yeah, about two or three years before you came along. <laughs> But yeah, I, you know, it, that's the thing. It's it is yes, it ends up being the people. I wouldn't have the multiplayer. Uh, I w- Resonance Arcade wouldn't exist if I hadn't done all that stuff in the past. You know, mm-hmm. I, and now I'd like to think that Resonance Arcade is a slight, you know, little community. It's it's getting there. You know, we've we've got a few people who come and watch every every week. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, and you know, we've we've got people we interact with all the time there's a lot of people that talk to me personally rather than via the resonance arcade twitter and things like that but it you know it's it communities are such a wide topic you know we've we've been talking for an hour on them now and i still think we could probably talk for many 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 more hours now you know why i ran a show entirely dedicated to communities because there is so much to it i mean you you start off with just trying to define communities which is incredibly difficult to do but in the end it's usually a group of individuals who are working towards achieving some goal regardless of what that goal is because there are communities out there that don't give a flying fuck who they're standing next to. They're only concerned about that shiny epic prize at the end. Mm-hmm. And that is part of, you know, their competitive spirit. It's how they do it. They have no problems yelling and screaming at each other. They have no problems not sleeping. And then you have the communities whose entire goal is I am playing with one of my best friends. And that is still a goal for a community. And every single varying shade in between exists, whether it's the safe harbor communities of I happen to be gay and I don't want to be in a community that does not support gay you know, rights. You can have that. Or you could be on the opposite side of the scale and be, hey, I'm a member of the KKK and I refuse to be in any clan or any game community that does not support that you have the entire spectrum of human nature Mm. and to honestly dig into communities you have to start digging into the motivations of humans you need to start digging into how you handle the triggering effects i mean like you said you know why you screamed back in the day if you could have the spare time you had now go into quake as yourself who you are today but back in that time Things would have been differently because Very you're the product different. of your experiences. Yeah. But the question is, would that have made it more enjoyable or not? And the reality is, probably not. Because it's all of the stuff that happened. You know, what you found out from your best friend next door, what they did and how they survived that kill or how they jumped or how they figured out that one wall I, hack. Or, you know, I remember a number things. of times where Lou would take me into Quake 2 DM1 and he would show me some of the moves like how to do them because i saw them i never knew how to do them because i was a rocket arena 2 player lou was a quick to deathmatch player he'd learned all the tricks that he needed to learn to you know to kind of you chris yeah yeah and i don't i still don't like deathmatch i think it's a horrible pointless escapade i'll be honest <laughs> with you um but rocket arena 2 i could still go and play that right now i could do it right after this stream i, I still love that game it's really enjoyable especially yeah. with the right people even though we're all as bad as each other these days <laughs> But yeah, that, that, I, I get you. I totally get you, and I, I totally agree. You know, you can't you can't have a community without without the diverse diversity of all the different people. As I said, you filter it down. You filter your community down until you get a, a concise group or a small group of people that you interact with. Even if you're in the biggest clan on the planet, there will be pockets of people within that clan or guild that do things together. There'll be people yeah. who go on five-man raids on a regular basis within a guild because, you know, they've met each other there. Then they'll get to know each other. Then they'll meet each other at a LAN party or an event. And uh, then they'll start maybe going to the cinema together if they live near each other. You know, uh, whatever. That sounds like oh, dating, doesn't it? To be Just fair, <laughs> This is such a unique thing for me because I've had the luxury of living in the United States, which is massive in size. And when you start building communities there, the person who you are raiding next to could be living in Alaska and you could Mm -hmm. be living in Florida and it could be really difficult to get together. Here, I am situated in such a place where most of the people in my guild, I could see within a two to three hour either car or train ride. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so much easier to build beyond the pixel. That's immensely inconvenient for us Englishmen, you know. Oh, Two or yeah. three hours. That's <laughs> you, nightmare that's, that's, in this traffic. That's great, considering the fact that for one community that I was involved in, we decided to go to OzFest, which was in California. 
I flew from Pennsylvania. Someone else flew from Texas. Someone else came down from Alaska, which is why I bring up Alaska. But we all came from very differing places. Some people traveled 16 hours by car because that's what they could afford. Some people went by train. We all came, but it took a massive effort to do it. And it was expensive as hail. Mm -hmm. In here, I can hop in a car, go down to Dover, cross the channel, and I'm on Europe. I'm on mainland, baby. <laughs> and I've got people who are like a 30 minute drive because the bloody countries are dinky. But here we Compared go. You can fit England into yeah. California eight times. Yeah. They're like Whatever. dinky dodgems. You know what? I you mean, know, you know, it's not the size that matters. It's the quality. It's the quality that matters. <laughs> Are you feeling a little bit like I'm, you know, intruding on your no, life yeah, there, Chris? You sounded like you were, my... you were, you've just moved to England the way you were talking about it then. It's, <laughs> well, <laughs> I know you haven't. No, but, see, that's that's, the thing. <laughs> but see, that's, that's the way it felt and that's the way it feels. And it actually makes it feel smaller. So much smaller. For you guys, like you said, it's an inconvenience to do that kind of a thing. But then again, I also believe English roads are a bit screwed up. Yes. Seriously. Horrible, but horrible roads. For me, system. driving eight hours to see somebody is natural. It's mm. an okay thing. But then again, the roads in America are a lot better. Easy. For to, their, yeah. it's, it, for their, it's, you don't swerve left or you don't go east to make certain you're going south. There's some weird stuff you guys do in this country with your <laughs> roundabouts. Roads. Your M and A roads are just bizarre. But, you know, because of that, it feels still a long distance away and it doesn't feel as close to touch. Whereas here, if I wanted to get together with you guys, we could probably set something up over a weekend and say, yeah, we'll do it. We're, we'll get together next week. We'll meet at somebody's place, uh, someplace maybe local. Or, hey, you know what? I'll come down for a weekend. It's not a problem. And it's not that expensive for one. And two, it's a lot closer. We're that actually doing that community. this weekend. We're actually, well, yeah. we're actually having a LAN party actually, this weekend. <laughs> I'm actually on Friday. I'm going out to, to uh, visit one of my guild members to have him cook dinner for my husband and myself. Yeah, it's it's. I, I love I love spending time with the friends that I've I've made over the years. You know, I'm not saying that I'm antisocial. Um, meeting new people, I'm again, I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. I'm even fine to put in the time to get to know the people and try and build new relationships. But it doesn't happen as often as you get older, I think. And the same applies in again gaming communities as it does is uh, in the music community. That. Just something you said then, Josie, just made me think. It doesn't. It doesn't have to just be games, though, for for bringing people together from all these different places. That happens. What you described there has never happened really to me, apart from for land parties with games. But it's happened a lot for music festivals. We all come from all over the country to a single place to enjoy something together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we want to be with each other. And the same applies with the community, but. Remember that when we when we used to play, there was as we said at the very beginning of the show, there was no video, there was no audio. Um, you could, I think, there was an early an early team speak. So I can't even remember what we used, but the very first one we ever used, the very first um, voice communications. Um, but we we you know we 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 used it all quite early on, but it was terrible. Remember net meeting? Oh God, yeah, Jesus Christ, that was integrated into Windows, wasn't it? Net meeting. It was a Windows product, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I Sorry, I'm probably Sorry, I'm showing my once. age here. No, no, my I, technological I understanding. But yeah, I, yeah, I, it, it is the people at the end of the day. The the, fa the the final result of any community is always going to be the people. The the clues in the name, to be fair, you know, community. You know, <laughs> it's. It, it, but the game has to still be good for me. If the well, game see, gets I, boring, I, 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 I'll step away from it. But I still might oh keep the friends. But see, what you've done is you've done an excellent job of setting up a foundation for uh, even potentially like a another next step to this conversation. Okay. You have the understanding communities are about people. Woo. You have the understanding that communities revolve around a particular topic, be it music, be it games, be it drinking, be it cigar pubs, be it, you know, rubber duckies or whatever. They have a topic. They form around it. You bring yourself into and you use video game as that um, I was about to say nomenclature. Wow, what a horrible choice of use of word. It's not even the way you use nomenclature. Wow. But anyway, you use that as the root for what spins that particular community. And you start to have to deal with what makes a gaming community so different from the other ones. What pitfalls and troubles do they have to face that none of the other communities have to face? 
what makes their problems or what is really unique about them and what they have to go through. It's all I mean, related, you, though. Even if it's, even it's, if it's, it's unique, it's related. It's related, but there are very specific, unique things that gamers have to go through that a sewing club does not. Um. Yeah. No, I disagree. I think they all. I think every community has the same problems, just manifested in a different way. Right, because people so like to get together and write massive news articles and media posts about how the sewing community is completely degrading the school and the children of the population of today. I bet they did when sewing first came out. Okay, uh, no. Yeah. Remember nice that game, Remember that, remember that games been... are very early. Uh, they're still quite an early form of entertainment. The, the same goes with television and uh, Was there a sewing like. gate? Just, just curious. Cause, no, you know, because, no, because there wasn't a mass but, communication back then either. But see, this is the thing. You, you say that there are similar things. And yes, there are going to be things that everyone as a community goes through. But there are going to be certain specific problems as well as successes that make the video game community different. And that they have to specially work their way through that nobody else has to deal with. Now, you could simply say that the online community if you wanted to, but I'm trying to keep it, like you said earlier in the show, nailed to the video game and the gaming community. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to pull it straight down. Now, there are going to be specific things that a gaming community suffers that nobody else does and no other community has to go through. I, 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 do, I do agree to an extent, but I still think they all revolve around social problems that are, are present in every community and every group of people. But they just manifest in different ways, shapes, and sizes. They're the same what, problems. What, what are the core things that happen? I mean, obviously, there's the there's the politics involved. There's the fact that someone might not like someone else or talk behind the back or whatever. Which happens That's, in every community. That happens in every community. Yeah. That, I, do, I mean, I'm in a I'm in a band, and it happens in in that. Which band and... is basically Gamergate. As it, I mean, not going to go in. Let's not get into Gamergate too much because mm. I'm not qualified to to go into it anyway. But basically it's it's gossip and hearsay yeah, and yeah. people getting out of control essentially and that happens in that happens opposite me at work every day when somebody talks about somebody else when they've walked off and i can hear it in the tone of voice where they say something completely different to what's just happened but they think that they're telling the truth because that's how they've interpreted it that's how these things happen but anyway starting no, to rant a little bit no you, it, you just made me think of something with that example. Um, going back to my sewing example and the problems that can be different between the gaming communities and the sewing communities, per se. Technology changes at an insanely fast rate. You know, we are following the progression, and yes, we are starting to reach that decline where Moore's Law is not exactly doing what it used to do anymore because we've reached what are pretty much, you know, physical limitations within the laws of physics. There's not much more you can do with that. But it's still, technology has advanced at an incredible rate. Like you said, not even five years ago could we be doing something like we're doing right now. It just, we didn't have the technology for it, we didn't have the throughput or the bandwidth for it, etc. So yes, technology moves fast, would you agree? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay, the yarn community doesn't quite technologically advance that fast. No, because they have matured. They no, have no. already matured. No, they haven't. There are still there are still companies out there, and I only say this because I actually developed a website for a sewing site, a haberdashery store. Yeah. The types of yarn that is used, the places they get the yarn, is actually evolving and changing, but nowhere near at the speed of games being released. No, of course not, because we are released, still an early. We are still at the computers. And technology and information and devices and all of that malarkey and all this interconnectivity and social networking is brand new. We may be very, very, um, yes. we may be very uh, brand new in terms of history. You know, at the end of the day, computers have been around for what, 30 years, 40 years? Hang on, no. A lot longer than that, but you know what I mean? Mainstream consumer yeah. computers have been around 20 or 30 years now, yeah? Mm -hmm. That we can all accept that it is around about that. I don't know exactly. The internet has only really been around since 1988. I think that's when it first commercially became available. Maybe a bit Nin later. 95, 96, when people started to actually use it. Properly. So I think 88 was the first kind of commercial trials or something to that effect. It's, it's around that time, anyway. <laughs> that's really, really recent. I know some people that are watching it may is. not have even been born then, but still, it's still really recent but in terms of technology. If you take the sewing community. If you take a skateboard community, a bike community, a community that does rambling together, 
these things, even when they were new, did not even come close to the evolution rate you see in technology. They just didn't. So how do you think this because is affected that, then? Because I, I agree with that. I, I completely this, agree that, 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 that now this, this is the thing. Turnaround. So think about this. If you guys, if we in this wonderful world of technology didn't have as quick a development of the speed. I mean, I still remember when 24 megs of RAM and, you know, you, you got all that kind of crazy stuff going on. But if games stopped coming out as fast as they were because of the technological advances that are becoming available and Quake stayed as like the ultimate game for more time than it was there, do you think that we would have even some of the issues we have today? Probably not because we wouldn't have the technological advances to do half the stuff we do. But by slow, by going slower, people have time to evolve, to adapt, and aren't constantly dealing with this ever-constant flowing change and everything that goes with it. Mm -hmm. I think there's another element there as well, where uh, there might be. the gaming industry itself is something that has went on an exponential increase over a very short space of time. And I'm talking over the last seven or eight years. The amount of games or gamers that are in the world is quadrupled, yeah. went up by a factor of 10, 100, who knows. There's been such an oversaturation of people within the broad gaming community that it's a little bit chaotic, I feel. I, I agree. I, I agree. It's still a wild west, which is why I think that the, there are going to be communities that pop up that are like yours, where you guys have that heart and soul, where you guys still hang out together, you still do things together. That old community may be in the past, but what you have now is still a damn good community because of the tightness and the bonds and the bro love that I see present here. However, sure. people band together in the sense of the unknown, in the fear that you guys were talking about before. You bound together with other people who will either have the same you know, directions, goals, or what have you, and people still don't quite know how to deal with, in my opinion, all of this influx of everything, you know, should so, we only stick with one game? Are, are you saying one that one gaming games? is in its infancy then? Is that, are you I, agree that it's in its I would infancy say though? Online or digital gaming is definitely in its infancy. Gaming as a whole, yeah, or I should oh, say oh. distance gaming, that's a much better way to put it. Yeah. Because gaming has always been around for as long as we can tell, because they found games dating back to like the 6,000s, you know, let's, let's or 6,000 years ago, what have you. That, that kind of stuff shows that gaming has always been around, but we've reached a world where borders stop existing. Yes, some borders, and most borders. Not all of them, unfortunately. For what <laughs> we deal with, and for the people who we see, our borders are lowering. And while this is a fantastic thing, it is happening at such a rate. Human nature, we still are, we still have, we still make decisions, we still uh, are motivated by things that our ancestors were motivated by because we haven't done that full awareness and, you know, evolutionary steps up. We're still... Working you know, on it, but the I, technology is moving way faster than we are. I still want to. I still want to disagree here. I think relative. I love that you do. <laughs> I, I think relatively. Sorry, guys, this has now become Chris and me duking it out. Think about, think about, right? How young? Let, let's say we, we say 1980 is when uh, 1990 is when the internet came out. Yeah, when did sewing come out? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, well, it's well, a valid there question. Was a there was a public beta. Right. Well, come on. There will be Wikipedia. I, I, I imagine. It, I imagine. A piece of twine to attach to. Exactly. History. Now, back then, this... the understanding of the technology that they were using was pr a lot more primitive than our understanding. We have evolved. Our brains have evolved since then. Since the since people started sewing and putting things together. In ter ex I think relatively. The speed, and remember that we're experiencing the information age at the moment. That is that is the age that we're in. We, uh, we, because we're in that age, our, the human mind is focused on developing, <laughs> developing new technologies. So we experience this at a, uh, what we see as an exponential rate because we're experiencing it from almost the beginning to, you know, good fruition. Now, I don't think someone will have taken a needle and within, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, have. And I don't think everybody on the planet would have known what sewing was, you know? I don't think that it would have... I don't think they would have developed all the different sewing techniques and all of the different... Again, sewings is still going on now. We've got new new machines coming out. Sewing machines got invented, you know, in this uh, uh, last century. 
before that they had to do everything by hand and and they had that for hundreds of years thousands of years so i think relatively i don't think it's that different i i i, I fair enough it's, it seems to me that technology is advancing quickly but i still don't think that it's that much of a difference in comparison to the community side of it i think they would have still evolved the same way and it would have still involved the same problems do you think I that think so you, well, you, shit <laughs> you, <laughs> fair enough do you think what it is is that the um, the time scales for say sewing and time scales for gaming are, are negligible in the terms of the, the, the you know the time needed to evolve or for mindsets to change? Is in that a, what you're trying to say? In a concise way, thank you very much, Lou. Yes, yeah. that's basically what I'm saying. Yeah. And I, you don't have to agree with me. That's just. I no, mean, I don't, I, no. I, I don't agree with you. I, I think that. I don't disagree with you. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really agree with that because I think that we've grown up with the game and age you know you say it's 30 years old we're kind of in our 30s we've grown up with that that gaming age together yeah so we we've we've had a different experience of it it's it's, it's happened in our lifetime rather than in the lifetime of several generations that's kind of what i just said i i i, I, I kind of just said that the, the the whole we have experienced it from the start until now yes Mm -hmm. gaming essentially i mean i know gaming's been going on for millions of years before that but technologically on digital gaming on, yeah digital gaming has, has gone that has been that period of time but in 30 years i don't think they would have developed sewing to a point where everybody on but when they started doing it i don't think they would have developed it to a point where they they could have distributed it because they didn't have the communications they didn't have the technology that aids humans sewing and, has just for your knowledge been around for apparently about 2.6 million years so there, there we go so early on so sewing predates gaming apparently early on, <laughs> or, uh, 2 point six million humans years. by the sound of it <laughs> yes yeah, actually the, the, the one human 250,000 years old or something but uh, what I think is at least rather interesting is that many cultures came up with their own methods of doing the exact same thing stitching things mm. to hold things together you have the Inuits who did one thing you had the people in Africa doing something else the Zulus you have people in Canada doing their own thing everybody figured it out and you know, do you want a comparison for uh, that crazy you've got sewing. you've got Microsoft <laughs> IBM and Apple that's our uh, but they also all had people who hung out interchangeably between those various groups that like to spread information but again, so it's yeah. not <clears throat> like it's not like Bob who lives in Malaysia, who woke up one morning and went, I see the future. I will send digital ones and zeros over a glass and right. someone else will see me. And then somebody over in Mexico said the same thing and then they got together and went, oh, you know, we had the same idea. Not quite. No. Not quite. It's you, it, that kind of evolutionary, um, I should say, uh, measurement these, doesn't quite These work, discoveries but, you know, though, these discoveries could have happened um, hundreds of years between each other, thousands of years between each other, and they may have been individually discovering them without any influence over each other, apart from the fabled butterfly effect, of course. But you know that 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 they could have easily happened hundreds and hundreds of years. Now it's a lot quicker because we have all the communication we have, because the internet exists, because as soon as something leaks on Twitter, everybody knows about it. You know, so I I, I don't know. I think I I'm I'm still on my own I, side I, here. I, I still throw out there that that kind of speed and progress can cause all kinds of problems that are very unique specifically to digital gaming. Okay. What, what, because, you have, know, have you're you... talking about an, a massive impressive speed. How difficult is it for you guys to pick what game you're going to play every week? Um, we're pretty fussy, to be fair. <laughs> we are, yeah. Um, so you're, you're fussy. So how it's long actually, it you know what? It takes us what, let's say, ten minutes, fifteen minutes of talking at the most. Yeah. Probably. If you okay, think about it, when we focus on it. But you guys come with a couple of games in mind, right? Sometimes, sometimes you just go uh, and then choose some at random. Well, there's <laughs> been a saturation in the market of how many types of games are out there, which means there's going to be a whole bunch of different types of communities, which hmm. means there's going to be a whole bunch of different types of cultures. And then some people are going to play multiple games, merging cultures across multiple things. We are almost in a way as humans merging our various cultures to the point where we are starting to lose the individual uniqueness of certain cultures. Mm. Now, I'm not necessarily that, yeah. talking about, you know, the national cultures. I'm actually talking about the gaming community cultures, although one could easily make a parallel there. 
You know, that's what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the fact that they are having to deal with the fact that one week they may have someone join who is used to a, I'm so used to taking care of myself. I, I'm good at responsibility in games. You know, I, I'll farm the materials for myself. Hell, I'll even help you guys out. The next week they may have someone join who's all like, I'm all about the progression. Let's do that. And then you start having to merge them to form a different type of culture. And you will state that the best gaming thing you ever had was that time, but you also said you had transience. Think about what your culture in your gaming community was like when new people joined and when certain people left. I didn't and care back you, then. I'm sorry. You that may I, not care. That's, and that's fine. That's I, where you were at, but something changed. Can I just say, something I do care happened. now. <laughs> I didn't oh, care. Oh, no, you don't. You don't I was, care at all. I was, you're apathetic to the world. No. I, well, I am. That's pretty much is me these days, I'll be honest with you. But I, I, I used to care about the, not the result, but I used to care about the amount of effort we put, I, I put into it and, and the people who led put into it. Um, I used to care more about the people who stayed around than the people who came in and out. And that was probably wrong of me as a leader. I shouldn't have done that. Um, hindsight's you a have, wonderful you thing you have though. to take care of the people who are currently there no no but, no I meant know, as well as I could have done both I could have looked after everybody but I just basically knew new people I kind of I can't even remember looking at what I did with new people I'll be honest I, Ooh, you threw no, them to the lions yeah and it's horrible to think that because these days I, I do tend to try and remember everybody I, I you know get involved with in whatever way but see don't feel guilty or feel bad for the way you did that because I will tell you, sometimes there are going to be people who thrive and the throw them into the lion methodology, and then there are going to be some people who really find out that's not for me. And that helps them to make future choices about what types of communities they want to be in. Now, unfortunately, in some cases, it turns into what I see here as almost a form of apathetic fear towards gaming communities if it's not the one you're currently in. And to be fair, that's an okay stance to have. Because as much as Stee here is an introvert and doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody out there in the entire world and, you know, screw off humanity, meh, and the reality is he is in a gaming community. Yeah. He's already but in one. But it's one that he's already put a lot of effort and time and, and love into, I he's imagine. He's not trying to go find something new because where the culture is at right now is perfect. Now, if you guys turned around tomorrow and turned out to be complete dickheads to him, I'm sure he'd turn around and be a dickhead right back to you and mm. maybe decide to just stay in his basement and never come out. No. Nah. Well, until yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 have you, you've but, watched you know, some of the other shows, yeah? <laughs> oh, but, um, that's a that's quite a good question, actually. With me being so comfortable with this little community we've got here, if this were to suddenly disappear tomorrow, would that then drive me to go out there and seek something else? Would I feel that I was lacking enough to go out and look for some other geeky friends to play with? I think I would. I, I think I think if it's this community dissolved, then then I would want I'm, to seek out a, a similar set of friends. I'm always thinking of things to, like I'm always thinking of th either communities to join or you know even if it's going to play badminton or something like that, something something different. I I, I always want to interact with people, even though I say I don't like interacting with people. So that's a little bit of a confession. I, I like you guys. Oh, yeah. I do apologize. My husband is on call, so he has just gotten his on call notification for work. Um, I think, in the end, for me, you know, Steve, actually, you said, convince me to join a community. I, I would never do that. It's always going to be what you go after. But for me, I love people. And I am not afraid to say it. I may joke and say I hate people and people irritate me and people piss me off. But the reality is I am one of those really, really, really weird people who actually genuinely loves people. I look for people. I am interested in, you know, what did you have for breakfast? Are you enjoying your work? Are you not? How can I make you smile? How can I make your day better? How can I just enjoy listening to you tell me a joke about something that happened or, oh, we just had this one moment together. That was funny. But hey, let's go share this with somebody else. I, I went through a period of time where I had interactions with a total of four people. Family wasn't involved. Four whole people for two years of my life that I interacted with. And I did that because some really nasty stuff happened in my gaming community. That, that whole backstabbing thing I was talking about. I, I was severely destroyed. I had a nasty experience in that. Mm. And then I, I trimmed my social circle down to those who I could trust. Uh, yeah. And then time mm. passed and I realized I was suffering. 
and I couldn't figure out why. And when I went, you know what, I just need to find some people to play games with. That's where I had fun before. Let's see if I can discover that fun again. It's finding the people I think we're I scared of. It's the, it's the it's the searching for the for the right people because it's see, a hard it's hard work. It, it it is incredibly hard work, but at the same time, it's not always as hard as people make it out to be. Because it depends entirely upon what you're going to look for. So you, Chris, love to get involved in forums. You love to get involved in chats. You, you love to just be aware of things that are happening on Twitter and all this other stuff and communicate with people. And it's not going to be difficult for you to find people who are like-minded to hang out and boom, you've got a community. You know what? Since I started doing game, uh, indie game dev and started doing MMO buff and kind of raising my online profile, if that's the thing, uh, a lot of people have actually offered to play games with me. That I would never have not well you for one. We've we've talked about doing some streams at some point ourselves. Uh, I, Josie, sorry, specifically. Um, uh, and there's you. Yeah, sorry, I was pointing at you, and then obviously realise you can't see what I'm pointing at. Um, this is the problem, people. Someone, someone make something so we can sit and poke each other. Uh, take that all back. Let's take that all I'm back. I'm sorry, I don't believe they're mime compatible yet, but I'm sure we could build an <laughs> RFC for it. I, I, but I. I I think the I forgot where I was going. I'm gonna I'm gonna go home now. My brain is is seizing up tonight. It's not it's not maintaining track. Mm. Uh, see, it's it's the people. It's what you look for in your community. And in the end, gaming communities are so diverse. Going out and finding them for you, like you said, we were gonna play games together. That's where you got yourself confused because yeah. I think you're afraid to play a game with me because you know I'll own your ass. You probably will. So, and you know probably. what? <laughs> I don't care. They really won't. No, you 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 probably will because you play a lot more games than I do. That's the thing. It's I, I don't. I'm not. Are you kidding me? I went like a year where I got a chance to play a total of maybe two or three games, even as a game journalist. All right. I mean, come on. I'm just now starting to play games again. I opened up a game and people were like, oh, I remember this game. I'm like, I've only just heard about it. <laughs> Don't touch me. Hey, you don't even you know. want to see my stacks. My, I've got stacks of games and I'm, I've loads of stuff in my Steam library and everything. I um, I, I think it's nice that people have offered to play games with me, though. That was, I think, that's where I lost myself. Uh, the, it's nice that I'm getting offers to play games with people, not just streaming or anything like that. Just if you fancy a two-player game, mate, give us a shout. And I like that because I've never really had that. It's always been the clan. When I used to play socially, uh, or join a random server, get really, really miffed off with the teenagers screaming at you, or the or the people just being outright offensive for no real reason, and and then not play again, you know. <laughs> I I will tell you there are certain games like Steve had pointed out where uh, I will not play that game because the community is toxic and shit, and I will go right out on a limb and say it. Um, I, however, will give those games a shot if I can mute everybody else except for the friends who want to walk in with me. Hmm. But I, it's not going to be the first thing I turn to when I'm like, hey, I kind of want to play this. To me, that's actually one of the ways I actually qualify games, whether I enjoy them or not. Would I play them with a group? Would I play them alone? Would I play them while I'm in a meeting? Would I play them on my phone? Oh, um, and I can't believe I've oh missed gosh. that one. You've obviously practiced that somewhere, haven't you? No, I actually totally made that up on the fly. I was like, that sounds a little bit like Green Eggs and it. Ham. No, it's Green Eggs and Ham from Dr. Seuss. Um, oh, right. And, you know, it, it's to me, if I won't touch a game without a group, it doesn't qualify as a really good game to me. That's where we differ because I absolutely love single player games. Good. Experiences. Ah, 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 but see, you believe a single player game has to be played alone. Do you know what I do with single player games that I classify as playing with friends? I play the single player game at the same time as talking to my friend who's playing the exact same single player game, and we multiplayer it using voice over IP technology. Well, so it becomes multiplayer. We also do that, so... <laughs> but my point is, if I wouldn't even do that with a game... <coughs> It yeah. doesn't qualify as a good game for me because I, I wouldn't be recommending it to my friend or I wouldn't want my friend to suffer through the bullshit. Or I have whatever. to play a game on my own. If I want to play a game and absorb it, we've already established this, um, Lucy and I. We, we, uh, I cannot play a, a single-player game that has a story, that has some kind of either emotional or at least mental investment in, in it with other people. 
because I can't pay attention to it and I must absorb all the information. That's how I am with films. I have to, if I, I this is why I don't watch films these days because I don't have, the, the, I've, I've, my mind is on other things. I'm working, I'm on my laptop, I'm speaking to my wife or I'm doing something and, and it's, it, I can't take the information in. I, it's because you go around looking at all the, um, the, the, the photos on the walls of um, half naked women and you want to admire them all. As we uh, saw when you were playing Metal Gear yes, Solid. Yes, th- well, that's part of the game. It's in the game. It, I why, have to absorb all the information. I've just said that. <laughs> absorb all the information, yeah. And let him have his excuses. Everyone needs to hide behind a mask sooner or later. <laughs> I've, I've already got my mask here. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't need to hide behind uh, anything. Um, no, but yeah. I, I, I enjoy single-player experiences, but yes, I, I agree. I always want to talk about games, even if it's single-player, with, with friends. I always want them to play them. And I... Even, this is really hypocritical, but I love sitting and playing ga- and watching my friends play games that I've already played. Yeah, I enjoy that. I hate watching games I haven't played. I can't. I don't understand how you guys can watch me play Metal Gear Solid. Because it's crazy you know, to me playing it. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not play it. See, that's that's kind of the thing. Um, the entire community world behind the Let's Play community is really interesting. Um, I. There's one particular YouTuber who I'm not going to name who never talks. You have no clue what they look like. They just play a game and they play it really, really, really well. Like they are terrifyingly gifted and good at oh, the game like they're him, playing. And I get I get a kick out of it because you can tell when they're pausing to try to show to the people who are watching that they're not going to pick up that piece of armor because they don't really need it. But you know, there are people who do that. And when I watch something like that, I want to see an expert play a game. If, however, I want to just experience a game, I would rather see a person talking about it, playing, and it's the personality that's going to make me stick around and watch, not necessarily the game. And if I find someone who's doing a particularly good job of you know, streaming, they may be telling great jokes but be shit at the game, I will actually enjoy that. <laughs> But if there's yeah. going to be no commentary, if there's going to be no way for me to see the crazy faces that someone makes or hear what they're doing or why they're making the decisions that they're making, they better be fucking good at what they do or they're going to yeah. bore the you hell see, out of me. That's why yeah. I'm not a very good game streamer solo because I'm not very good at games these days and I'm not a particularly <laughs> interesting person to listen to. So I, I, I think I fail miserably at that. But even though we don't get loads of viewers on our on our streams, on our game streams, I enjoy them. So that's all I really care about. I'll be honest. I enjoy the interaction and the comments and the I, trolls. I my, my question is, is it these guys you enjoy playing with or do you actually pay attention to the chat as well? Um, the games, I, I pay attention a little bit, but we don't. We didn't really get that many people coming to watch. Sorry? Nothing. What's that? I was uh, saying listen. that you ignore your community. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I try oh, not to. Oh. I try to do my best with all it's, the other things I've got to do. It is incredibly hard. I, I, I will tell you, the hardest thing for me to do was to play through a game while talking to the chat and everything and answering their questions. Uh, it was Wildstar. I was previewing it to people because we had early access to it. And I got a total of uh, a quarter of a level because I kept stopping and explaining because I use my hands to talk. I kept explaining, so you do this, you have this, you do this. I spent in a six-hour stream a quarter of a level. Well, I saw. I watched one of Talking your wildcard streams, and yes, all you did was stop and talk run, to people. Run, stop. Yeah. Run, stop. And, yep. and I was watching it to see what the game was like more than anything because I hadn't seen it before at that time. I think our focus was getting the questions answered as well. Our focus does seem to be much more on on the game. Um, I, I know we're talking about communities, and we did really, really enjoy our our communities that we've been a part of, especially SQS. But it was very much focused on the game. There was like a fifty fifty split, and when we were in the game, it was almost all about the game. It wasn't about the people we were playing with so much. No, we just needed to make up the numbers for the, yeah. the relevant. Uh, yeah, it was like, can we, can, can we find four players for this game? Can we find eight players so we can have a game of Left 4 Dead? It doesn't matter who in the com- in our small community it was that f- made those numbers, as long as it was people from our community that that, that were there. Mm. Uh, so it's, I think our, our focus is, is, is split between games and community, whereas it seems with you, Josie, that you, you're... It's, it's like the games are an enabler for you to... to be part of these communities and to, to, to... Partially. 
I, I can um, happily play a game that none of my friends like because I know that there are certain genres of games that I really, really like that my friends look at and go, woman, are you on crack? Um, and that's okay um, because I can sit there and play my game while talking to them about what I'm doing in my game and they can be talking to me about whatever game they may be playing and still talk about you know what we had for dinner for lunch and you know what was the latest joke that we heard I can still have that conversation even if I'm playing a game none of my friends want to play and I'm okay with that I I think I'd find it incredibly difficult to play a game at a level I'd enjoy it and then have dialogue with someone about something unrelated Same. to the Last, game. I, I it agree. Just wouldn't happen for me. My it, brain. It, did you now. guys use Teamspeak or Ventrilos or Mumbles and yep. stuff like that yeah. in your in your day? Not, but not not in the competitive stuff. No, we didn't. In fact, we didn't do it until we stopped playing competitively. Yeah. We hadn't even done it socially until quite late on. See, I, I think that might be part of it. My gaming experience has always involved somebody either having them on at the table in front of me so i'm used to having interactions with them while i'm trying to figure out what i'm going to do with that particular piece on the board and how dare they take russia i'm talking about risk for those who are curious Uh um and then i have uh when i started to get more heavily involved in gaming and we didn't have those really fast connections i would still be on irc at the same time that i was playing whatever game happened to be in front of me i remember it's distinctively black and white i also had aim and icq going at the exact same time Mm -hmm. so I had multiple conversations going constantly and I was playing a game I moved further into the world where we have you know that uh, voice over IP take whatever application you wish and apply it I am used to being able to play a game at a high caliber at the same time as talking to people guiding people responding to whispers handling the fact that I'm having a Skype call at the same time that nobody knows what I'm doing because I'm trying to organize something else that's going on I'm used to that vast array of doing it and being able to do it well and that organizational thing being able to move almost like hyper threading in my brain from one very I, task when to I the do, next when I that do, was how I was the entire time so it's almost like I was trained that way when it's I do a game, a game scre- oh, stream specifically Screenager! Hello Screenager Sorry. how you doing matey? Nice to, nice to have you with us and nice to have everyone else with us actually there's a lot of people in the channel at the moment um, I, uh, yes. I'll, uh, I'll say hello to people in a minute um I kind of I, I I I can talk about the game, but I feel a little bit like I'm maybe repeating myself. I feel a lot of pressure to talk about the game and what I'm doing in the game, whereas people who are watching don't always want to hear that. You know, the things that seem to be most popular on these Resident Arcade shows are an- anecdotes and things that are personal to us and the little the little stories we can tell. Even though I remember the first few episodes, we made a little doc- a, a document that said, uh, with notes on, on how, we, how we performed and kind of what we should improve and things like that. One of the things, one of the notes was um, too self-indulgent because <laughs> we were talking about our personal experiences, but I think people want to hear that, you know? Well, that's the only way people can connect to you. And it I mean, makes it unique. That's the thing. There, there's, a, there's a very fine line balance that mm. you have to make if you're going to be, say, a Twitch streamer, or, or actually, in particular, a Twitch streamer, because there's more of a live audience with what you're actually doing. You need to be able to show your game or your content like your awesome show. And I can all tell you guys are now heavily reading chat because everyone's eyes just went the exact same direction. That was amazing. Um, But, you know, you have a community that you can talk to at the same time as you're playing a game. You need to still be able to show the content that people might be interested in and still engage in a conversation that Mm -hmm. is interesting for that community. Now, there are going to be some people who are like, I am going to play this card in Hearthstone because this is going to be the most optimum approach. And because of the fact that I know that he's playing this deck and he's got a 48.6% chance of Jenga, you know, they can get really technical and there is an audience for it. Hmm. But there is also an audience. And I, I, I count my blessings and my lucky stars because I've started streaming in the past week or week and a half or so. And the people who come to my stream, they enjoy watching me play whatever game I happen to be playing and telling me about their experiences with the game. But nine times out of 10, we're talking about some random ass shit. Like, you know, something happens and I go, oh, come on, that would never happen in real life because, you know, you've got this going and then this thing happened. And, you know, you go off in this little rant and people like to engage with you, especially if you take the time to talk to them in the chat, recognize the fact that they're there. Because now, in the end, it's the connection. That's what actually makes communities happen. Yes, it's the connection definitely. you have with other people. Do you not, do you not think, um, oh, well, I, I know I can identify 
my problem as being a little bit feel, I feel like I'm under pressure when I'm doing solo streams when we do our streams together I feel a lot more comfortable because I don't have to do all of the work you know on my own and that's the problem do you feel it's, like you have to talk if you're doing a solo stream at all times and no, there can never be dead silence no I don't um, but I do worry that I should be talking if you know I, I I, sh I feel like I should be engaging with something other than small talk, but the problem I have, I think, is that I don't... I've got loads of subscribers, but not many people come and watch my game streams. They come and watch my dev streams when I do ha when I do, do them, and I don't do regular personal streams. So it's, it's kind of difficult. Someone actually just said earlier, I don't know when you stream. I don't know when your streams are on, although I advertise it and spam it all over the place constantly. <laughs> People still don't okay. know, you know? <laughs> do, you, do you remember how I was saying, if I'm going to watch someone and they're going to be dead silent and, you know, not really give me any kind of interaction at all, I want to see the creme de la creme performing works of magic in a game. Yeah. The moment you add that personality factor to it that I as a person can connect to, hmm. I can walk away and go, oh, God, did you see the face that he made when he found out that that slime was going to eat him? You know? Those little things, those connections are what make humans naturally kind of bond together. And that's what starts the foundations of your community, especially if you start to give respect to the people who are, are there and what have you. But, you know, when you add a face and a personality and you attach a game to it, it makes a difference whether you are playing at exceptional levels or you are playing at, I have no idea how to shoot, but I'm going to go play Counter-Strike, wish me luck, you know people can still enjoy that as well it's the personality in the end that people are going to find themselves attracted to you know? I, I feel as well when i don't have people watch because i always have my chat open whenever i'm streaming a lot of the time i don't have people join for a, a good while before you know into the stream and by that point when people start joining i'm getting a bit like oh i've had enough now i want to <laughs> i want to finish and like you know engaging someone are you afraid of becoming mainstream no just like you were really unhappy when the pro people showed up in gaming, no, no, are you that afraid was, that you might become mainstream? That was a different thing. I, I, I am, I am. I'm, I'm just. It's just a curious okay, question. Okay, you know? I've explained before about the indie thing. Um, that the uh, personally the in, I don't, I would never sell my IP for any game, or I'd never, I'd always want to have some control. Again, it comes back down to control. I think. Um, and it, it's main, the control is mainly because I have put the work into this. Or, you know, I have I have organised the teams and got all of the assets and done the coding and and I it, it's 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 a bit of me, you know. But the same applies to to kind of you know streaming. I think I I've lost myself again. <laughs> I'm Do either tonight. of you two stream besides with Unresonance Arcade? Uh, no. Have you any desire okay. to? Because I keep meaning to ask you guys if you were uh, if you wanted the copy the copy of X Split, you know to. Um. I personally, I don't think me streaming a single player game would be interesting to anyone at all. And you say that, and I am almost finished playing Mass Effect single player three through, and the amount of people who just randomly show up and go, Ooh, you know, this is going to happen. I'm like, Well, no, because I've already <laughs> yeah, gotten this thanks, amount mate. of points, and I've successfully <laughs> done this, and I've already got this part done. So I think I'm going to be successful. And then I actually had someone. Um, go, well, you have to pick, you know, you're going to lose these people and this one's going to die. And I went, no, they're not because I took care of that in my Mass Effect 2 save. And they went, I hate you. And they stuck around and became a really good friend. See, I've, you know? had, I've had the same situations, but it, it takes a long time to build up some kind of following where you can actually put a show on that feels like, personally, that the effort you're putting in is worth it. See, I'm completely yeah. different than you from that. I don't care if nobody is watching. If one person is watching, if it's just one whole person who is watching me and they walk away with a smile on their face because of something I've done, fantastic. And I kind of want to like poke Lewis right now because I, I still want to see his slime goo face, but you know. <laughs> slime goo face? The, uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, but it's just a little comment from, uh, yeah. This, you know the in joke stuff <laughs> that we're talking about? <laughs> Yeah, but you know, exactly. yeah. see, for me, for me, it's like, like I said, you know, I, I need a community. I need people around me because I, I find the greatest enjoyment in my life knowing that someone is smiling 
simply because I have had some kind of positive impact on their life and they know that somebody cares about them and honest and genuinely cares, doesn't want a damn thing from them. You know, that, I find my greatest joy from that. So for me, just one person watching me walking away with a smile or going, oh, my God, that woman is a complete and utter noob. She has no clue what she's doing, but I can't stop watching because mm. she keeps making me laugh with how horrible she is. Even if it's that, if one person just walks away with a smile on her face, I feel I feel like a queen. I feel like like I'm on top of the world. A really bad way to use it, but it I get such a sense of pleasure from it. Usually such a sense of accomplishment. Usually when I do stream and I'm someone an joins and uh, I think I'm in the middle. I think I'm an introvert slash extrovert. I'm not I'm not either. Um You're just what, a vert. Yeah, I'm a vert. <laughs> <laughs> when I uh, uh, apostrophe vert. When I when I stream and someone joins my channel, I engage with them quite often if I notice they come in, which I usually do. Um, but I've also noticed that quite often when I do engage with people that are just kind of browsing, because they kind of pop in, I go, oh, hello, or whatever your name is, and then they'll disappear as soon as I engage them. You know, and, I, and I'll start trying to talk about what I'm doing, or I don't know. I, I'm sure it'll, you know, if I, if I did something more regular, it would be more thingy. But um, we kind of got off the subject of communities ish. We were it was slightly related sort to of. it. Kind it's of still moved a gaming away from community. It. But see, that's just it. It's still a gaming community because we were talking about how the Let's Play generation and how those types of communities can actually impact gaming communities. And again, I still stand behind the statement that people who are involved in gaming communities are facing something that nobody else has in any other community. I still stand behind that statement. And I will take you to the bank. And I will buy you a My Little Pony Princess outfit to uh, to, to argue that point with you, Chris. I will, because I know you you stand slightly different. But yeah, I, I, I said we've we've I've already talked about uh, my opinions on that. Anyway, it's uh, I don't want to keep repeating myself. I, that's one of the things are I tend sure? to do a bit too much. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. We do are you guys to... think that Chris waffles? Um, just say yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try and think of a funny pun there, but yes, he, he waffles an awful lot. And, but, and I'm glad that, that there are people like Steve to, to tell me that I do, because at least I realise then, you know, I'm trying to do something I don't think it's necessarily it. a bad thing. I, I try not to... Uh, most times. I try to I try to stay factual, but end up rambling and trying to find trying to find the words for it, you know? that's yeah. I don't ever want to come across like I'm being cocky or too, you know... I, I don't know. I like I, everyone likes to be liked at the end of the day. Even as much as I say I don't want to be liked, everyone wants to be liked by somebody. No, or no, something. no, no. I think for you, you don't need to be liked. No, of course but not. But you'd be okay with being liked. Whereas there are some people who feel they need to be liked. I, I certainly um, don't. It's I like was I like that when I was younger. Nowadays, I don't need to be liked, but I enjoy when people like me because mm. it yeah. means that I've connected to them. In the end, I just want to connect with the world. I mean, I. I... <clears throat> I'm kind of on the same sort of thing as Josie here. I, I, the, the things that I do, I love the idea that there's someone who's enjoying it and someone who's getting some, some kind of putting a smile on someone's face. And I do that in a different way, though. I don't do that through the through the games that I play, and I don't do that through the through necessarily through through Resonance Arcade even, but through the um, the creative things that I do, through the the, the development and the design stuff that I do and I get the same feeling I, I, I love the, even if it's just one person telling me that something I didn't I've done was was cool you I know love what? that I don't I don't strive I for, live that. for that almost I, 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 I want people to learn from me I, 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 I oh god that sounds like I'm again egotistical no. but I want people to I, that's why I write technical <laughs> blogs that's why I that's why I like to mentor people at work you know in professional I, I, life because I enjoy passing on information whereas when i was younger i wanted to keep it all myself it was all coveted you know i wanted all the information and go on josie <laughs> now see that's the thing what you say to it that you're not necessarily wanting the world to learn from you what you're wanting to do is spread and share information and that is actually the true crux it's you don't want to be egotistical. We know this. And yes, what you said could come across as egotistical, but in the end, it's not. What you're saying is you have 
what you believe is knowledge that you have learned over years, your life experience. This is why some people love the anecdotes, because even if they're laughing their ass off at the fact that you fell face first into a bowl of chili at somebody's birthday party, it, they're still going to learn something from that. Either the fact that you yeah. you have a good sense of humor or, you know, they may find that they, that uh, it makes them think of something that they remembered. The, sh the entire concept of sharing information, communication in general, is one of the most uniquely human traits we have hmm. and it is how we actually meet it makes a difference whether you are using things like sign language to actually get points across what it actually is is just you are sharing your ideas and your thoughts someone has responded to them either by understanding exactly where you're coming from or digging deeper with questions to find out if that's what you meant and then from that we start bonding and we do something that I love to do which is like this which is how we all start to work together and actually become a global community. Yeah, and interestingly, because of that enablement of technology and the speed at which the technology grows, that is a, a huge thing now. It's prevalent everywhere. If, if someone knows about something, then someone on the other side of the planet knows about it within a few minutes, within a few seconds even, with something like Twitter. So there's a... As there's a kind of a global community with an uh, uh, instant understanding of, of things. So you, you, you're kind of right, I guess, in, in, in that way that the speed of propagation of information has given us a very unique challenge um, to all communities in that there's just a, there's no need for information to, to propagate slowly through word of mouth or through you know, visiting someone in the next village now. It's just instantly there. I'm, I'm... And, there's, and there's multiple sides to it. You've got the stuff that comes too fast that is false information. I actually watched once over Facebook, um, or I, I should say a news feed on Google, uh, a discussion about uh, bodies that were beheaded being found. And that wasn't the story at all. It was just the news reporters trying to necessarily get clickbait and the truth and the reality of it. I watched you know, Sky News go uh, change their title frequently with their alerts that were up. And I chronolog I, I catalog the entire process and I put it on my website because I was just like what the fuck is wrong with you people so that can happen really quick so people have to get a lot better at making judgment calls of what's true and what's not true but because there is so much information so quickly you end up with the communities who know and the communities who don't know because they either weren't following the right person on Twitter or they weren't paying attention to the right blog at the right time and it can actually make it very difficult to get into a community because you don't have the same information that, say, somebody else does. Right. Something you something you just said there kind of smacks a little bit to me. It, it, I I don't want to be part of a community to be part of the politics of bureaucracy involved in in a community. But see, that, that's uh, not what I'm talking about. Okay, no, but you you just mentioned you just said that the in you know information false or otherwise propagates very quickly. That information mm -hmm. depend. I, I okay. I I understood <clears throat> understood you talking it talking about things like Gamergate, for example. Not I'm not talking about not technological talking information. About okay. Well, okay. Well, I've, I've misunderstood what you're talking about. I, it, but it, I suppose it is also true of negative stuff that happens within a community that propagates quickly, and that can be incorrect as well. And that's the mm -hmm. stuff that I hate, absolutely hate in any community. I hate that. I hate all the superfluous stuff that's not about the the i suppose the game or the product or the end result if it, if we're not all driving towards that final thing and we can do it in a friendly way i'm not i, I usually lose interest i think so that's interesting steve mm. i got a question for you go ahead <laughs> <Ooh, laughs> questions you just got this look of uh oh um being is you're in an interesting position in the fact that you are more introverted than you are extroverted yet I take my hat off to you for doing shows like this because it's not always easy um, although you may also have the sort of apathetic power or opinion of I, I don't care if you like me or not um, whatever you know but my well, question for you I'm constantly fidgeting while I'm on well but is that nervousness or is that just naturally you, you? do you do come across slightly more nervous on the streams than in real life obviously you know you, I say slightly it's it's noticeable at least but you're not I, I, don't, I never really ta tagged you as an introvert, I'll be honest. Well, according to my forte of personality results, I am a, an introvert. <laughs> because those things are so 100% yeah. oh, accurate yes. about everything. Um, Which no, hats are you I, wearing today? 
my question for you, you know, you are comfortable in your current gaming community, which I take my hat off to you because not everyone can find the community that they stick with for their life. Um, so for you, Chris is talking about how um, he wants to make certain that the community that he is in is driving towards something and that dissemination of information when it is not true is a pain in the ass. Yes. Now, as someone who is introverted, you are more likely to pay more attention to what people are doing and what they're saying and how they're saying it than other people would because they're so busy trying to share themselves with everybody. Mm. It's what makes the introverts so, uh, in my opinion, um, uh, insightful is a word to put it. So in your opinion, do you think that dissemination of information, even if it is wrong, is easily stopped? Or do you think that sometimes people's perspective in the way that the choices that they use for their words might be misinterpreted in that actual conversation, which can lead to things kind of going out of hand? And information being disseminated <clears throat> wrongly. It's extremely easy for for information to get taken the wrong way, to get taken out of turn, out of context. Um, I believe that certain people themselves like to propagate that. Uh, but I also believe that it's with, within everyone's power, and I mean everyone's power, who is involved in any sort of online community, to filter out the bullshit. And I believe that a, a, a lot of people are just too lazy to do it. They're... They just want to be spoon-fed stuff, and they'll take anything you give them. And also, a lot of people thrive on it. They yeah, thrive on that. People like drama. Stuff. Yeah. That's why soap operas are so popular, you know? Uh, it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't compute up here for me, I'll be honest with you. That, that kind of wanting to experience other people's... I'm not even going to say bad moment because some, some, I don't know. Some people just like to be involved with other people's business, I suppose. Whereas I'm perfectly happy with just looking after me and the people close to me and the people. You that selfish are, thing. Say what you want. I'm being honest. I, at the end of the day, I'm I, I'm interested in communities and other people, but I'm only really interested in those other people if they have an interest in something that I have an interest in. Now, that, welcome to life. Yeah, but I, welcome to how communities happen and form to begin with. But I mean, th I mean, there's a lot of people that say that they are altruistic and they go out and and they want to do things for 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 people and help them without any kind of uh, any kind of comeback, you know, any kind of payment or or but, recognition or anything. But everybody wants something from somebody. At the end of the day, no, no, they yeah, don't. I'm, I'm a big believer that knowledge should be shared. I am. I am. It's, yeah. It knowledge goes towards the progression shared. of the species and. The more knowledge that everybody has about everything, not anything in particular, just more, no more knowledge in general, the better place the world will be. Because the more minds can work on the same problems and find different solutions to them. That's how I'm science say, works. Though, <laughs> if you apply this to gaming communities, then it's, it's actually po possibly quite detrimental. If everyone knows everything about a game instantly, then that game gets wasted in, in no, moments. I'm, I'm not talking about content. You know, that's like saying you know the story of every book in the world. That's just unfeasible. And that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about knowledge, just about being up to date with what's happening with the world, about what technology is available, about what people are capable of, about what is capable for people to do. Yeah, but if you apply that to a gaming context, if you apply that to something like uh, World of Warcraft, you know, when a new piece of content comes out for World of Warcraft, all the top guilds jump into this new raid content and hammer it, and they've, they've done it all within a week, and they've shared it to the entire community, and everyone knows about it. And, and there's then wikis about it all yeah, it's the place. Gone. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all, all yeah of but that... no one's forcing you to look at this. No, but you, they are it's your choice knowledge. if you want to look at that information. It's the same as the same as watching a movie spoiler, a movie trailer. I don't do that. I do not watch movie trailers ever. Okay. Because I don't want to spoil anything for me if I want to watch a film. It's the same thing. See, there, there's there's something you're talking about there, Lewis. You're focusing on the game aspect of things. Okay. Let's look at a community where they're trying to make decisions for a group of 300 people. Because that's okay. what they need, because they're, the game requires people to get together in groups of 100, and they want to have a rotation so people can actually sleep. So the game mechanics require that. You know, they have a large place. You have the people sitting at the top who have to make the decisions. Should they tell everybody everything? No. Well, nah, you know what? Mm. They should tell people what they want to know. Okay, that right there is what I would classify as bullshit. <laughs> Never tell people what they want to know because that is probably one of the biggest contributors to lack of communication. 
because you get frustrated because you're not saying what you really want to say, but then you're getting frustrated and the other person's getting frustrated because you guys are having some kind of communication where there is actually no real feedback of give and take. No knowledge earned, no knowledge given. So that's my definition of bullshit, mister. <laughs> well, as part of my job there, I actually deal with a lot of technical communication. Uh, not on a software side, this is more like mechanical stuff. Um, and the more concise you are with what you want and what you need, the, just, the whole thing flows a lot easier. Now maybe I'm, I'm trying to extend that out onto you know, an area where it wouldn't necessarily work, but that's just the way that I see things. So, yeah. But see, that's not necessarily telling people what they want to hear. That's like me walking up to you and saying, I want you to fix my car, and you go, it's going to be 20 quid for me to completely replace your engine. You know, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that it's only going to cost me 20 quid. But there's a very uh, big difference between making what you want to say concise and to the point. Yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're getting at, but if, if, if I want to know how a certain mechanic works then I'm quite capable of finding it out myself or asking somebody who does know how that particular mechanic works. I don't need somebody to, up there to say, right, this is how you start the game. This is how then you progress on every single step because it, then it detracts from the point of playing the game in the first yeah. place. Yeah, that, that was, that's kind of my point. Is mm -hmm. that if, someone, if someone does it, does it all yeah. and then posts about it and you've got a wiki about it and all the rest of it, then you kind of, it's, it's, someone's already done it and the discovery is gone. And with those sort of games, that's a big part of it. However, when you when I, when I joined guilds in the past, or or when I've been part of a guild and someone's joined, and I've been in a group with other tanks, for example, I was I was a pretty good tank when I used to play MMO games. Um, a few different. I always chose a tank, but I liked no teaching shit. other people how to do it. But I wasn't taking them through how to play the game. I was taking them through the specifics of how to tank and what you need to do. A lot of tanks don't realise that they actually have to run up and, you know, get the attention of everybody and, and take most of the damage. You know, that's the, the main principle of being a tank. The but yeah, they, they, they don't realise that that's what you need to do. So they end up, they don't look around and watch that the mages or the healers getting battered by someone and go and run up to him and, and get them off. They don't realise that they have to do that. So training people to do that is a bit different from telling them how to play the game. It's a specific skill in that game, and I imagine this, you can apply that to most games. Yeah, but well, if if I wanted to be a tank and I had no idea what a tank was, then common sense tells you that you look up what a tank is or you ask somebody what a tank is. Like, okay. I, I don't know the first thing about... Uh, this is going to be... I'm just going to really be arrogant now. About like, blowing glass, for example. I don't know where I pulled that one from, but <laughs> let's run it's with it. It's an exceptionally... Very skilled professional. I, I can do it. it is. It's easy. Um, I watched how it's made. But if if I wanted to blow <laughs> glass, I wouldn't just go in there hammering tongs and assume that I would be able to do it. No. I would expect that I'd need to learn something first before I'd be able to carry out that task. But gamers and, are arrogant. Yeah. yeah. I knew I'd get that first from Josie when I said that. Not every gamer, obviously. That's a It's a blanket statement and it's a bit horrible. But... Uh, Generally, you tend to find that gamers that, well, the gamers that are problem that are yeah. problem gamers in a guild, in a community, in a in a clan, are people who think they already know it all. And I include myself in that. I used to be like that a little bit um, back in the Quake Two days, and I didn't realise that I could learn from other people. I was the clan leader, therefore I knew everything, you know. And I'm very much not like that at all now, you know. There are more people in the world where if they're like that in, in their gaming community, they're like that in real life in general. Exactly. And that to me is just don't be a bloody dick because you're actually ignorant, showing your ignorance by showing that you can't learn because life is a lifelong learning process. You never stop learning. The day you do is the day you've accepted ignorance. Exactly. And I'm sorry, that's not cool. But anyway, uh, you know. <laughs> hey, someone what agrees with me. Moot agrees with me in the channel. He says he thinks that all gamers are uh, arrogant. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not, not obviously. I'm, I, am. I, I, I think that came out before sweeping you made your statement. Whatever, whatever. Very sweeping generalization. But what I was actually getting at is, if you're running this 300 community, 300 person community, and you have to make a decision as to who goes into which group, do you reveal your entire process as to why Bob doesn't get to play with Joe, but Brittany gets to play with Joe? I, as a as a leader of, a of different that's a dissemination of information do you reveal all in that i mean is there actually a viable time where privacy or secrecy should actually be used in a gaming community 
Well, if you're talking about tactics, that's quite an integral part of it. Mm, I'm not talking tactics. Obviously tactics. I mean, you don't reveal them to everybody, well, do you? But if, if, if you're saying that you're deciding whether or not to put a certain person in a certain role, that's Because tactics. you know for a fact that they're not as good as somebody else yeah. and you want to put them with someone stronger. Do you share that information? I think it depends on, on your style of, of leadership. Because some leaders, yeah. some leaders may, again, like as I said earlier, some people <laughs> like me like to, to inform everybody as much as they possibly can, explain why they're doing things. I don't sugarcoat things at the end of the day. I'll say exactly what needs to be said. But it depends on the personality that you're giving that information to as to how they're going to respond to it. So again, as a leader, that's a skill. It's a skill being able to deliver the right information to the right people. It's not as cut and dry as, as should you or shouldn't you never will be right but it goes back to the statement of where you were saying you firmly believe in the sharing of information open yes. sharing but there's obviously certain times where information should not be shared and i wanted to make certain that that at least oh, got mentioned no you, you're right i mean i'm under an nda with my current job for example i can't legally um <gasps> reveal the things that i'm doing but right. that doesn't you know the same applies to lots of different things um i like sharing um, the 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 technical stuff that the things that I learn to do with the things that I'm interested in uh, or problems that I when I write a blog post I usually write a blog post because I've been annoyed by something to the point where I need to I need to write it down and it's not necessarily not always necessarily just to teach people this is this is exactly why in in 500 pages <laughs> exactly why i have a problem with this particular thing why you should use I've, I've wrote a blog post about why you should reuse um integer primary keys instead of guid primary keys in sql server because i'm sick of answering that particular question to everybody every single job that i start you know everybody's got a different opinion i did some tests and made sure it's just a, just my way of processing things but i also like going look at this this is well cool i'm going to write a blog post about some um bootstrap stuff that i've done recently that i've been geeking over you know so it's different depending on what i'm what mood i'm in i think <laughs> Great, I like this. So we have a community that plays multiple games that is full of a bunch of people who don't like new people because they don't get their inside jokes, but have to sit there and listen to Chris Waffle. I am very <laughs> sorry, guys. Yes. Anyway, on this on this note, unless anyone else has anything else to say or anybody in the chat has any questions for anybody, uh, we shall uh, lock up. If you want to ask any questions, <laughs> field lock. You know what I mean. Lock up. Close the door. <laughs> Chin them. Um, right. So um, we'll. Uh, uh, get me cool. We'll, 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 we, shall, we shall lock up. Uh, Josie, have you got anything to pimp? What are you up to at the moment since you've left MMO buff? I am currently streaming, but I am going to be writing very soon for uh, a company that some people may know about, some people may not. But I am going to be looking to join Pixel Dynamo. But this weekend, I'm also looking at doing Child's Play, or not Child's Play, Extra Life Charity Stream. Um, However, on top of that, I can pretty much guarantee that throughout the entire month of November, I will be streaming with a different mustache every day. I Supporting as November as a Mo sister. <laughs> I, a mister. And my team is known as the Warbling Dingleberries. Thanks to the name that my husband and his twin came up with you, you many do, years ago you know, you know what a dingleberry is don't you yeah i Good. do i thought i thought it might be one of those things that americans hadn't heard yeah. of or i'm not even sure where the name where the word comes from oddly enough i'm educated yeah i, don't know, you know. <laughs> I suppose if as you an didn't american know, you'd have it's asked, such a you? scary thing most <laughs> americans aren't educated are they oh i disagree that i know <laughs> i know a fair few a fair few decently at least educated. three decently not at not least well three. decently <laughs> I said a couple, mate, not three. You don't stretch <laughs> oh, that no, far. Okay. Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, oh, wow. Anyway, yeah. yeah, so thank you very much for everybody in chat. I'm sorry I haven't engaged with you as much. I've actually been quite engaged by Josie's uh, ramblings. I uh, enjoy listening to other people who can talk as much as I can, but actually be coherent with it. Um, so, yes, thank you to everybody. There's, there's actually more names in there than I can, I can go through and list today, which is very nice. And thanks for bringing people with you, Josie. Very appreciated. Um, Are you kidding me? A massive, huge thank you to everyone who decided to come watch. I I do miss doing shows. Trust me, it's said, not going to be the 
last time I'm around, either here or other places. I'm sure we'll be more than happy to have you on again. Um, and uh, if if you so wish, if it's your kind of thing, but we'll uh, we'll Steve's talk about like, it. Like, I won't have to talk. It's great. I can just sit here. It's and awesome. Nod, I can just sit here and nod. Hey, it's usually <laughs> Sam that does all the talking. To be fair, <laughs> he's uh, he's not here this week. Uh, um, so yes. Um, Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, the, the, on Wednesday next week, we will be back with another show, uh, another one of these shows. Uh, on Friday, we're not doing a stream uh, on Friday. We're not doing any uploading to YouTube either because me, Lou, and Steve and a few other friends are having a LAN party. However, we may be streaming the LAN party but we don't know about that yet. We're not confirmed because that means you don't know about it either. <laughs> yeah, the amount of uh, the amount of stress that's involved in streaming at home with all the right gear and moving it to a LAN party may be a bit too much for me. And Chris, I may don't, go a bit don't think of it as stress. Just think of it as a responsibility. You know? Yeah, and if we do stream, we probably won't be engaging with people as much because we'll just be playing games. We're actually uh, having a Borderlands pre sequel LAN, so we're uh, we're all just going to hammer Who's that. Who's playing for... Claptrap? Um, I think I might do that because oh, I think just, everyone else hates him. If there's if there's a big if there's a tank or a berserker, I'll I'll uh, play him as they always do. Athena, I think uh, Athena tank. has a shield, which is amazing. Haven't played, haven't even, haven't even okay. bought it yet. I'll be honest. I think I'll probably play, play him as Wilhelm. All oh, right, I think Greg wants to play as Wilhelm, so that means uh, Greg's tough. There's going to be some fights going track. on. Uh, I'll yeah. play as whoever I'm not that fussed, I'll be honest, but we'll see. We'll you find are. that out at the time. I'm not these days. I, I used to care about that kind of thing, but now I just want to spend time with you guys and play some oh, games. Man. That's all I want to do. Um, so next Monday, oh, uh, we'll be... Oh, let tissue one second. I think you have a little something coming out of your eyes there. Shut here. up. Um, next Monday, we'll be streaming our part three or four of our Metal Gear Solid 2 playthrough. <laughs> we forgot I, some part. We're, we're, I'm, the we're part on, where you die a lot. We're on 38 deaths so far. Yes, and Snake. you thought... Snake? Snake! 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 Not in, it's, it's Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2, actually. Well, Snake's in it, but yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, that's so... That's my memories of Metal Gear Solid. It's just Snake, Snake, That's Snake. my memories of it To as be well. fair, oh. I've only died eight times from the whole start of Metal Gear Solid 2, um, and we're, we're about three hours in, I think, and... Uh, yeah, but how many times have you restarted it? Uh, none. I thought you restarted the Metal Gear Solid 2 stream. Oh, yes, I did the Olga thing at the beginning, didn't I, again? But uh, I'd say there was another 10 deaths then. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever. I'm getting better at it. It's getting there. Um, so, yeah, join us next Monday uh, on YouTube, actually. We'll be uploading at half seven. And uh, that's it for now. We'll catch you all later. Thank you very much for, for coming, Josie. And thanks, everyone, in the chat. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Catch okay. you later. Bye-bye.